Hello there, I'm trying to organise a big news coming soon live podcast with myself and some special guests in three counties, Galway, Sligo and Dublin. These will be a small scaled back version of our Christmas show in three small venues with some special guests and I hope to have tickets on sale just before Santa arrives on the 25th. So if you know a fan of the Big News Coming Soon podcast in Sligo, Galway or Dublin, keep an eye on my social media over the next few days at Alan Clark Official and hopefully we'll have full details before the 25th. Thanks a million and happy Christmas. Hello and welcome to the Big News Coming Soon podcast and this is somewhat of a season... ASMR se- special. A season finale. I don't really want to call it a Christmas special because there's nothing Christmassy about it, but we're going to... But it is special. We're going to look back on the year we've had and I'm delighted to be joined by Macon Big Bank, Mr. David Cuddy. One and only. And uh, I'm in his studio in Mount Rat. Yep. Um, and to be fair... Alan's after coming up here today and you're after getting me over hole because I'm under pressure. Go on, so t- tell them what we did today. We done, I'd say we done 150 orders. Easy. We done more, I'd say. Is that a lot for one day? It's a lot for, what time did we start at? What time did you come up at? Around 12? 12, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. And we went for food. Nice food. Yeah. I fed you. Because the last time that Alan came up, it was this time last year, I'd say. This time last year you came up. I'm very unprofessional, I didn't turn my phone on silent. You came up and it was very late when we finished our podcast and I says, I'll go feed you because you said you were starving. Yeah. And there was only one place open, we won't mention it, and you fucking prick, you abused me for a month over the shy food that you got. Uh, it was a medior- mediocre pizza place. No. What, you actually said it was shy? It was, yeah, it was obviously. Yeah, so when you came up today, I said I'd look after you and I, I fed you in Gabrielle's and you enjoyed it. You thought it was a lovely roast dinner, didn't you? Yeah, well, tell us about Gabrielle's because that food was of another standard, though. Like that was, that was a really high standard. Yeah, yeah, Gabrielle's is nice. Opens early, does nice dinners. We would have went to Uncle Eddie's, but we wasn't open on a Sunday. But um, yeah, really nice food. I had really beef fresh. in Gabrielle's and it was mouth, mouth watering. Yeah, I, you could talk it apart. I had duck. Wait for this now. This is very, very cool. Notions. In prawn sauce. Notions. Yep. That's when you've had a good day now. 150 orders. Let's go downtown. I'll get you the duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. It was grand. It was good so we've too. been here in your office all day long processing orders. Kids come in to see you. Hoodies, uh, hats, sunglasses, mugs, mm. uh, diaries. The kids came in. It was great to see them. Bruce got big, didn't he? I cannot get over the size of Bruce. Oh, I know. I've months. seen videos of him. But um, he's such a pleasant chappy. He's so good. Like the second he came in, like uh, Vicky brought him in in the in the little uh, carrier. What do you mm. call it? And the big smile out of him. The second we're first lucky with him that he's so quiet because Jane is such. Jane came so in busy. and she was climbing the walls. Climbing the walls. <laughs> she's hard work. <laughs> Everyone always loves Jane on the stories. Everyone loves Jane. Oh, she. But she's the intensity levels. Jane was like the Tasmanian devil here today. Yeah. She came in. Crazy. She w- went around like a tornado, wrecked mm. the place, and left. Yep. Just dropped the mic. I'm gone now. I've done enough damage. I'm going to. I'm. I'm bored now. <laughs> I, know. I need to wreck somewhere else. I know, I know. And poor Clark there, just tipping it's away. Crazy mouse. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Lily as well, tipping. Lily got stuck in, helping us with a few orders. Yeah, Lily's a great girl. She gives me an awful lot of help here because I don't have an awful lot of help. You're under pressure now these days. I think I've been under pressure all year. Such a fucking balls. That's why I wanted to, to have this podcast and, and have a chat with you because I think an awful lot has happened over the last 12 months for both of us. And we're not going to get into it. We're going to keep it lighthearted. We're going to keep it upbeat. But we're going to look back and reflect at some of the good things that happened throughout it's the course of the year. It's going to be like a therapy session. Oh, because look, do you know what? We can sit here and bitch and moan uh, for an hour and a half or two hours. But you're like, where is that going to get us? Won't get us anywhere. And we haven't had time to reflect on the good things that have happened throughout the course of the year. So that's what I want to do. Mm. Like I I said to you there a minute ago, um, you know, you were in Donegal during the year and you said, was I? Yeah, was I? I couldn't remember. You couldn't even remember that you had a kind of a family because Would you were under so much pressure at the time that you couldn't enjoy it. But let's let's try and go back. Mm. To so, Donegal? No, well, not Donegal. I'm going to start in April. Right. April's a good month. What happened in April? Sure, Bruce came into the world. Oh, that's a good dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Bruce came into the world. He, he's a, he was a, a joy. I was worried about him coming. Do you know, because, do you know, when you have new babies, you don't know if you're going to be able to handle the other one because you're barely able to handle what you have. <laughs> and then another one comes and you're there thinking, how the fuck am I going to handle this? And how, how are you handling it? Vicky handles it. Okay. So, so I handle so it. So you're not. I handle it by not handling it. <laughs> I'm just so lucky that Vicky is on fire because this year, you know yourself, and it's not, 
we've often talked, it's not a social media influencer thing. It's, it's if you're in business, it's so busy. And when you're starting off and you're trying to keep, get things on, on, everyone's trying to fuck you. Everyone's trying to do you over. And you always put yourself in positions because you don't know what you're doing. To, just everyone's up in the hip. So you kind of have to just run with it. Wing it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then Bruce was there and in fairness to Vicky, like she was, you know, she's off on maternity leave and she was doing everything. And as the year go by and you get busy and, you know, I kind of have two jobs, you know, you're cutting timber and you're drawing out timber and then you're doing stuff in the evening. And But it yeah. was really like, it, it was a really positive thing. Like Bruce was an angel because mm. you, you had lost a baby mm. and you were trying again and you were wound up like you were under, yourself and Vicky were under an, an immense amount of pressure. Yeah, like the last time I was telling you on the podcast, you know, yeah. that had died. Then the you know Vicky lost the baby and then she's pregnant and then the other baby comes and you're just thinking ah look things will get better but you're not really processing everything because everything's happening all at one go yeah and you're just always so busy but I think busyness is good stuff like that for me anyway because I, I I tend to I just get stuck in I don't know what I'm supposed to do I just know I can do and I do that yeah and it kind of gets you through kind and, of everything and Bruce has been a pleasure since day one. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, he's a great chap. There's very few people that can say that now, no, in fairness. No, he's, he's, he's a good young lad. Will he's he make you want to have some? Me? Yeah. After the 10 minutes I spent with your four kids today. That's that, it. You're, ow. That's you're, the best yeah. contraceptive I could ever have. <laughs> uh, there's a lot more good points I'm never writing points. another woman again. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Don't, uh, I, I'm afraid to actually make love to Vicky now this time in case she... Do you know what she said to me? She'd like to have another. Right? I know. Really? Yeah, I'm terrified. And what what really is Bruce? Like eight, eight months or something? He's eight or nine months. And wow. I know. So there's four kids and Vicky four wants kids a fifth. And she'd have another. She'd have more. And are you are are you trying like? I'm always trying, but I'm not trying to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you you what, say it. You'd pull out. That doesn't does that work? Uh, well, I don't know. Not we wouldn't be advising it now if there was any. If so, was like, if it, we wouldn't. I, advise I don't it. think that. I don't think. I think that's how everyone gets caught having babies, isn't it? I should pull out and blow a load up her oh, back yeah, and it'll no. be grand. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. I don't think it works. What did you say there? Blow it up on the back. Blow it up, up her back. Oh my god! That's a, a phrase that I heard for the for many years ago. Right. Okay. I think it was in one of those. So to answer the question, you are cool, Cullen fairy tales. You're doing the no pants dance, but you're not. I, you're not trying. Not trying to have a baby. Okay. I don't think I could handle another one. It's very busy, and I do feel so guilty that I don't get to spend time with him. What kind of car would you have to buy next? Uh, there's still room for one more in the back of the car. Is there? But there's no room in them cars. There's not really, though. Once what? you have the back seats up, there's no room for buggies and there's no room for anything. What are you driving at the minute? Uh, I am driving... What is it? Is it a Citroen? Citroen. Citroen Space Wagon. That's what it is. I keep getting mixed up with a Citroen and a Renault. Them two kind of things. Well, it's, well it's not called Space Wagon. That's what it's called, Space Wagon. A Citroen Space Wagon. A Citroen Space Wagon. Is it not like a Picasso or something? Or? No, that's the... Is it? No, it's not. It's a Citroen Space Wagon. That's all I know it is. I've never heard of a Citroen Space Wagon. Well, that's what it is. That's what it says in the back of it. Right. He's double checking. I, He's I, on I, the phone here double checking. As if I'm I interested. Know. I'm interested to see what it is because I thought I was up in my Cit- Citroens because... Well, we had the Range Rover. Citroen sponsor our local uh, football club. So I thought I was kind of... Um, and I was trying to live the champagne lifestyle on a Coca-Cola budget with the... Uh, a Citroen team. Space Tourer. Is that what it is? Yeah, that could be it. Oh, it's like a minibus. Show me it. Show me the thing. Is it like a minibus? That's it. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a fine wagon. <sighs> so it's like a Berlingo on speed. More or less. Yeah. But when you cool. were, we were going looking to... But like you say, there's no space for a buggy. There's no space, but it, we we couldn't go anywhere, the whole lot of us, together with the other yoke. And we got this um, Multimac. Did you ever see them? No. Nope. It turns a, four, a three-seater into a four-seater. But when the kids were going anywhere... They were fighting like tigers. And I was getting phone calls off Vicky saying, the two kids are fighting them. Lily and Clark are always fighting. And I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I just went to look for cars. And she wouldn't drive out unless it was an automatic. No oceans, right? Yeah. And uh, that was the only automatic that I could find in a seven-seater. That wasn't like... If you want to buy a Jeep that's a seven-seater, you're talking 60, 70, 80,000. Like a Q7 or a... Just was more Because Vicky doesn't care. She doesn't give you shy. And the kids do ever embarrass shy in the car. So like, there's no point in buying big fancy cars for them to fucking wreck it. Yeah, and is that um, is the diesel consumption good on that, on the Citroen? 
I think so. Yeah. Because I had a Q7 there for a few weeks and it would pass everything except a petrol station. Really? <gasps> I thought there was a hole in it. Right. It was a sow. How about the one you have now? I'm delighted with the one I have now. I got 856 miles to a tank last week. That is some going over your No, like that. sorry, sorry, sorry. Kilometres, kilometres. Kilometres. Still good going. 850. I was delighted with that because they're a big square. Like, they catch a lot of wind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a big square Big tank. wheels on it. Yeah, big wheels on it. I thought, I, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Back to you. Well, I can ask you questions as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, you got a car this year. I did. Uh, you had a busy year. I've had a busy year. Now, I know you told me not to talk about any of this stuff. And I won't, right? I'm just going to graze off. Right? Talk about what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Right, so... You got really fucked over this year. Like, I mean, really fucked over. Right. Talk about it another time, Yeah, right? we're not getting into that, right? So, around March, you were in bad old form. Bad old fettle. <laughs> you weren't happy. You were a very down and out man. I was, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to kind of go back to basics and start to scratch. And, and um, you rang me one day and you said, Oh, I know the answer to my problems. I'm going to do a huge live show. And put yourself under huge pressure. I know. I didn't. I didn't think it was going to be the answer to my problems, but it was definitely. It was. De- I had no other option. I had no other choice. Go big or go large. Well, what else was it? I was going back working for the man or try a live show. So, what does it consist of? Trying like you wake up in the morning. You it, just go, it didn't. Like, re- did you not go and go to do a small show? But how did it turn into just? No, it didn't really happen. Like like you're saying, right? So basically. The podcast is really successful and a lot of people listen to it on a weekly basis. And then live podcasts became a thing. And you know yourself, people are messaging you saying, do a live show, do a live show. And an awful lot of people say that they'd love me and you to do a live show. I'm not just saying that because we're here. And we did talk about it for a while, just time. And And I would get a handful of messages every week saying, when are you doing a podcast with Cuddy? Or when are you doing a live with Cuddy? And I haven't been able to do lives this year, but that's uh, neither here nor there. So... Um, the live show came about from a, a bit of pressure from people asking me to do one. And I went down and I looked at a hotel in Ballina that would accommodate 138 people. Yeah. And I was in the hotel in Ballina and I said, I'd love to try a live podcast. And they said, oh my God, we're delighted that you're here. We'd love to do it and this, that and the other. I booked the date and it was a Friday or a Saturday and went home. I booked the guests and I was delighted and uh, I, I went home saying to myself, I wonder will I sell 138 tickets, genuinely. And I, so I swear on my life, I said this to the hotel owner. I said, you know, if we don't sell the 138 tickets, can we put in tables and make it cabaret style? So if we only sold 60 tickets, hmm. we could fluff it out and make it look full. And she said, yeah, no problem, whatever you want, whatever you want. And, and that's what I had in my head. And then that evening, unfortunately, the hotel had to double booking and the date wasn't available. They thought it was available, then it wasn't available. So I had the guests booked and the venue cancelled. And then I got a call to do a live podcast in Cork, in the Cork Opera House, to be a guest on a live podcast down there. Hmm. And then I started thinking to myself, well, if I'm getting a call to be on a podcast in the Cork Opera House that holds a thousand people, am I thinking a little bit too small here? Maybe... Maybe I need to think a little bit bigger. Maybe I need to go a little bit bigger than 138 seats. Because if they're selling out a venue in Cork that is 900 seats. Mm. So the TF in Castlebar had already been on to me. Webster had already been on. And how big is that? 2000. 2000. Now there's different rooms. You could have a room. <laughs> you could have a room with 50 or you could have a room. I can't wait to hear this story because I, I just can't wait to see the first podcast is going to be 2000. I had met him in my local shop. We both have the same local shop. And he said to me... Um, would you come in and put a show on in the theatre? And I said to him, you're nuts, like. And I mean this. I genuinely mean this. And I think I said, I think I rang Stuart Miles after and I said, oh, I'm after bumping into Webster there. And I said, you know, he wants me to go in and do a show in the TF. Like, sure, he's away with the birds. You know, I thought he's fucking lunatic. How, how, what am I going to do? Put a show on and fill 2,000 people. Hmm. And then um, I went down and I'd done the gig in Cork. And... I started thinking over my head, like, maybe I will, maybe I will, maybe I will put something together. So I was in and out of the theatre for two or three weeks and I had their holes annoyed. And I was asking, how many seats do we need downstairs to fill it? And And had you a structure for the show in your head at this time? Yeah, I always had a structure in my head for the actual show that I would like to do. I don't know, would people enjoy it? Would it sell tickets? But I always had a structure. And so I was in and out of the theatre 
loads of times and I honestly had their holes annoyed but they were they were so nice all the time now I'm sure I left and they were going he was in again walking around for mm. two hours so anyway long story short I was asking how many seats can we take away to make it look full downstairs blah 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 and I think it came to 530 and that was the, that was the figure so I had gone from 138 to 530 and I said right so let's do it let's try it let's see if we can sell these 530 seats which would be the, do- the downstairs floor space and then if you were to sell them, you can add on wings, mm. then you can add on the first floor, then you can add on the second floor. And there's three floors in total. And that's how we approached it. I got the axe, I put the show together and I started filming the bits and pieces myself. Went, went on the road filming them. I produced them, I edited them. I'd done the whole thing, everything from start to finish. It was all my idea, all my production, all my editing. Um, all Did my- anyone helping you? I had a, a guy help me with the camera, but I did all the editing and I, I had a, the, the storyboard in my head. And they were all my ideas in terms of going down to Swinford and meeting Cowboy and getting Garen the driving lesson. And we put the show on sale and I said to myself, we'll put it on sale on a Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. What else will anyone be at on a Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock? Yeah. They said, brilliant, Alan, let's go with that. I advertised it. I've got a big show coming, big news coming soon. 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, bang. Coldplay announced we're putting our show on sale at 10 o'clock Tuesday morning huh. on Ticketmaster. Coldplay, biggest band in the world. I was like, oh, shite, what are we going to do now? So we decided then we'll put it on sale at half nine. Just try and get in a half an hour ahead. And then people were saying that they wanted to try and buy Coldplay tickets and tickets to this. So uh, I said, right, we'll put it on sale at half nine. Half nine came, I phone blew up. Can't get on the website, can't buy the tickets, can't whatever, blah, blah. So whatever had happened, Ticketmaster didn't change the time ah. from half nine to ten. There was a queue outside the theatre. There was people showing up at the theatre to try and buy tickets. To For my, your show? Yeah. That's cool. My phone was, I was hiding like down the back of the hotel at this stage. I was a pure. Were you nervous? I was embarrassed and kind of, because there was people in the lobby looking for me. There was people messaging me, ringing me. My phone, honestly, I never experienced anything like it. My phone just went into meltdown. At half nine, it just went bananas. I was pulling up outside the hotel and I was on my phone and I said, just ha- give me a couple of minutes, we'll figure out what the crack is. So anyway, tickets went live at 10 o'clock and I think at, I don't know, it was like 10 past or quarter past 10, we had filled the 530 seats that I wanted to fill. And I was down on the stage uh, with Webster and Gillian comes down and she goes, you've, you've filled downstairs. That's it. That must have felt good. And it was such a weight off my shoulders. Because with these shows, like there's big expenses as well. And you have to be able to, you know, you don't want to cost any money because there's a big production involved. Mm. And, you know, there's an awful lot of, and the fees, the fees are insane, which is another thing for another day. Uh, Ticket fees and service charges and all that, like, which I think. And do they explain them to you before you? And I hadn't a clue about any of them. I hadn't a clue about any of them. I was learning as I was going along. People were saying, Alan, what's this fee? Or, like, I had only heard about this facility fee, which is another thing on top of your service charge, which is another thing on top of the, the booking charge. So if you're booking... So when you're telling everyone the ticket is this much, and that's what you think it's going to be, yeah. and then people keep telling you it's something else. You, you think the ticket's going to be 30 euro, and then it ends up being 45 euros. And then people think, oh, look at this fella. <laughs> you know, he's, he's trying to screw us all together. Yeah. But I only found out about that there's a booking fee, a service charge, and then a facility fee. And... It varies in every venue. And every venue you go to is different. So who puts the fee on? The venues. But the it's, not, it's not Ticketmaster. It's a different yeah, venue. there is a fee with Ticketmaster and then there's a ticket, there's a venue fee then as well. So we had sold the downstairs and then the tickets just kept going and kept going and kept going. And then within four days, the whole thing was sold out. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. And then... The so pres- when, it's all, when it's all sold out then, and um, they, were, they were thinking, right... Now these people have all given me their money. Yeah, well... It, now it, I have to entertain them. So then the, the the pressure was off then the marketing campaign. So we didn't have to go doing too much more marketing and we could put the focus into the show. So we hit the road and came up with some ideas. I wanted it to be... I wanted videos included in the show so that it wasn't just us sitting there talking all night long. And one of the videos was, was um, a Cowboy giving us a tour of Swinford and the other video was Garen getting a driving lesson. And they went down really well. And then there was different parts of the show where we did dance-offs and uh, quizzes and just had the crack and brought some people up on stage. And and hey, like, it was definitely the biggest challenge of my life. Were you nervous? I was ready to die. 
And because I was backstage and I, I've told this story somewhere else, so my apologies if, if I'm repeating myself, but I was in this tiny little dressing room that I'd found backstage and I was getting ready and I was ready to melt down. But a few things that happened that day, Garen's guitar broke and he had no guitar and um, there was a few other bits and pieces. I didn't really get anything to eat. <laughs> I had ordered a pizza and it didn't arrive and then there was just a few other bits and pieces. So I was up to high dough and then I was panicking about what I was wearing and, you know, and uh, people were showing up outside. And then and then because people know you, like they text you as if like, is there any chance you can get us in or yeah. can you get us up the queue or. And you're trying to focus on what you're doing. And, and you've you're you're you've a team of 20 people back putting this together and you can't. And it's in the back of your head. You obviously don't want to ignore Mickey, who's in the queue, but you have to because. Yeah. I can't go out to you, Mickey. Like, I just can't. So there was an awful lot of that as well that was stressing me out. Um, But then I remember I was in this little room changing backstage and then Stuart Moyles came in and he goes, can I change in here? And I said, yeah. And I said to myself, is there any feckin' other room this fella could have went into? Now, as you know, Stuart Moyles is my best friend in the world and I take a bullet for him. So I didn't mind. Is he now? Yeah, well, wow. so, that's grand. You're my second best friend. Right, so friend. anyway, um, he comes in getting changed and I was pacing over and back. I was hyperventilating. I thought I was going to die. And I said to him, I just don't know how I'm going to go out there. I don't know how I'm going to go out there. I was looking out through the curtain. The theatre was full. It was a great atmosphere. Like you're looking out at 2,000 people and I was shitting it. And I just turned to him and I said, Stuart, I don't know how I'm going to go out. And he was getting dressed and I'll never forget it. He was putting on up his shirts and he goes, <laughs> at least you don't have to open the show. So instantly he made me laugh and I realised there's somebody else that has it worse off than me because they don't really know him. They're not here to see him. Mm. They don't know he was opening the show. He wasn't advertised. He, he's taken the bullet. Do you know what I mean? He's taken the first punch. Yeah. And it's all the pressure was on him. And it wasn't until he said that that I realised, hang on now a second. He's, he's a harder job than me. So he went out and he done old time rock and roll and he done status quo rock and all over the world and he absolutely blew them away. And he just opened the doors for me and honestly, it was easy for me after that. Really? You yeah. Were shiting it. He was just I was shiting it, yeah, I was shiting it because I had a load of things written down that I wanted to say and I wanted to get my point across and I was worried that I wouldn't get my point across the way I wanted it to and I honestly haven't even watched it back yet to see if I did. But when you went out on stage, say say the first time you went out would have been scary. Yeah. Say the first few minutes, but do you ease? Do you does the nerves stop after a couple of minutes, or like the second act comes on? Do you do you get less nervous then? Do you get a bit of confidence, or is it nervous the it's, whole way through? It's a weird feeling because you the, 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 there was nerves for the first few minutes because I wanted to open up the show and say how are you doing and this is how it all happened and this is why I'm here and this is this is what's happening and this is what I think and then you're kind of panicking and there's silence like the silence is deafening. Hmm. And you're just looking around and there's just people everywhere. And you lock eyes with someone and there might be an expression on their face. And you're like, oh, she's not enjoying this. Or he's not enjoying this. And you focus on that then. And that's all you can focus on. And you're trying to get your point across and then you look at him. And it might be just his resting bitch face. Hmm. And you're just going, oh, he's not happy. He, you know. And then you're, you lose your trail of thought and you're trying to get back into it. So this was, you know, it, this is all very new to me. Um, but to answer your question... I think the adrenaline the adrenaline takes over and you're worrying about the next segment, right? So I have to get through this segment and then we have to get to the next segment and the next segment and the next segment. So yeah, there's nerves, but you're so wound up that you have to deliver. Would you be less wound up if you weren't, uh, if it was just you and you didn't have loads of acts, would it be less No, because, because I think... Or are you more worried about your part? I was worried about my intro piece, yeah. And then... I, I think it's it's good having them there because there's something to bounce off. Yeah. Do you know, if it was just you and you were sitting there, I, I, I don't know what I'd do. How would you carry that? You know the way I want to do a live podcast? Yeah. Right? And I really want to do it because I love doing a podcast. But I get nervous when I have to learn something. So if there's other... If, if you were asking me to go out on the stage, like I went and I'd done your podcast, mm. and if I don't have to, to plan anything, yeah. I'm grand, right? Do not bother. I go out in front of a million people, right? Yeah. But if I have, a, have to have a structure, say when I'm doing my own, I need a structure and I need to have a plan, then my head doesn't work great with plans. Right. And when I was watching you, the Galway races. So this, this year you done the Galway races. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a minute because that was fucking 
that was that was cool okay but when i was watching you do that and you're there, like that was a mad week like i was watching that that week and it was like early in the morning you're standing there <laughs> you're you're doing these interviews with all these different people but there's people i have this thing with loads of people watching yeah. from all angles and they're just coming by walking by and you're trying to do stuff and there's a structure to it yeah and it's all over the place and everyone's listening there's a big microphone there's a big television <laughs> with you on it that had to be hard. It was hard, yeah. Like, it did was. you, did you, like, were you not, was that not really difficult with all that stuff going on at one time? If like, you're not nervous, was there be people shouting and, like, how do you keep your concentration with that sort of stuff? Or was that good, tra- if you hadn't have done that, would you have found it really, really difficult to do the live shots? That's the thing, you see, everything, one thing led into another because I didn't have the courage to do that gig at the Galway races. I, you know, I didn't take it on and then I kind of had no choice but to take it on. That was a big take on. Because, you know... You took on the promotion of that and everything Mm. this year, didn't you? Yeah, I wasn't wasn't awfully keen about doing it. I I was... It's a tricky one. I did want to do it, but I didn't think I was able to deliver it. So I wanted to be involved and I, I wanted to be part of it, but I just thought, I'm not sure if I can do what they're expecting me to do. And I didn't think I could be that person that they needed me to be. What was that person? So you're the host, you're the host of this um, track cam. So basically, um, I had to, so I was involved in the social media and the lead up to it. So promoting it and getting the word out there in a different way, in a quirky way, as opposed to any other year. They had they never really tapped into um, an influencer or a content creator the way they did this year. So I had come up with a few ideas to get the ball rolling, get people mm. talking about it. And then on the week of it, I was the host of this this audience cam. So in between the races, I would talk to jockeys or football players or singers or comedians or whoever. Did you know who you were going to talk to? Not a clue. Didn't know until two minutes before they were there. And it was basically, there's Brian Larkin. He's a rugby player with Connacht. And I take out my phone and I Google Brian Larkin, Connacht GA. I try and come up with three questions and I know nothing. Or not Connacht GA, Connacht Rugby. And I know nothing about rugby. And I just try and come up with generic questions. How are you, Connor? Are you looking forward to the season and ahead? This is in the middle of the public. This is this is live as it's happening. So there's horses going around you. Hmm. There's a race after finishing. Somebody plonks this fella in front of you and says, "Here, interview him." Even and when you're doing the interview, would there be people? You know, when you do social media, be like, hey, Clark. No, no, not so much because I was in the parade ring. But we did one one day. We did go out of the parade ring, and we just quickly realised this isn't going to work. Yeah, because you're trying to do a video and people are coming over. People are jumping on you and jumping in the background and shouting Clark and where's Cuddy? And, (laughs) you know, genuinely shouting where's Cuddy? Um, So it didn't work, the the whole live thing. But that was a full week of like up right early in the morning. That was seven days, yeah. And it was, it was early starts and long days, yeah. Yeah, but my, my, my point earlier was the thing that prepared me for that was I did five minutes of stand up with Cowboy. So I did the opening of his Bell Mullet show and I did five minutes. I had asked him, could I MC it? I wanted to stand in front of two or three hundred people and just kind of break myself in and say, right, I want to be able to do that. And then one thing led to another and I wrote two or three jokes or, you know, about Bell Mullet and about that area. And I said them to him and he, he seemed to like them. And then it turned into this five minute, five minute stand up comedy piece, which in hindsight was probably a bit cringe and I probably didn't do too well, but it definitely gave me the confidence to go on and do more things. So I went and I did that and that was that was fine because I could leave the stage anytime I wanted. Yeah. So if one joke didn't land, I could leave. You know, I was only there to be the MC. I was only there to introduce him and then I expanded on it and I told one joke and it worked and then I told another joke and it worked and I told another one and it worked and I said, this is working. And then as soon as I was out of jokes, I could say, thanks a million, make some noise for Cowboy Kelly and the show started. So there was great, I had great freedom and it was great to kind of throw myself in. I had the two or three hundred people in front of me and I could get out anytime I wanted. So that was lovely. And then that gave me the confidence to do the stunt with the horse on Shop Street. That was good. So the next stunt that I was struggling with uh, social anxiety or public anxiety was to bring a small little pony down Shop Street dressed as a town crier ringing a bell Mm. to promote the Galway races. So that was booked in next. Did you come up with all that? Yeah, that was my idea, yeah. I had two ideas. One, I was going to try and learn how to horse ride and, and walk down Shop Street on a horse. It was a better plan. 
or the other one <laughs> was to get the little uh, the little pony and go down like a town crier and ring the bell and he you had could have got up in the back of the little pony I'm oh, sure he was like a stallion to me <laughs> and um, he had his little Galway races rug on him and everyone was taking his photo and I was like the town crier but it was brilliant because it was, again I got to this car park down at Jory's if you know Galway I parked there where you got clamped that time Bastards. so I went into that car park and I got changed in there and then I came to the front gate and Michael Maloney was there the manager of the race course and Sinead the marketing manager and um, Hannah was there as well this other marketing girl and I'm here dressed like a town crier and I'm like I don't know if I can go out there like I said I just don't know if I can walk out you say out. that to them? yeah I said I don't know if I can walk out onto the street and I was pacing around the car park and Michael Maloney says to me he just laughed and he says I just, we're not paying you enough. Like he just said, this is just madness. I if someone said that to me. Do you know what I mean? I'd like, get the fucking checkbook out. He said, this is madness what we're about to do here. And I said, right, well, I can't back out now. Put on the cloak, got the horse, started walking up Shop Street. Quickly realised it was 99% tourists. No one had a clue who I was. I was just some daft bastard walking up the street with a little pony. And then it was sound because we were just, there was just Americans all dying mm. for photos. No one knew I was your man, Alan Clark, from up the road. And then I settled into it quite well. And then there was a couple of shops that asked us to pose for photos and things like that. But it was just a lovely thing. And of course, you had the few people saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that to a horse and you shouldn't be ringing the bell and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, but it was all very controlled, very safe. And, you know, it didn't cause any stress but, to the horse that or anyone. That helped for, to get ready for the live show, doing the gold race. So that was it. That was one step in then. So the horse then prepared me for the actual seven days of the races. What was the hardest part of it? Of the races? Of the whole seven days. What did you find the most difficult? The hardest part was the interviews. Like, I wouldn't be good at that. I wouldn't be good at that. I wouldn't be good at coming up with questions for people that I know nothing about. Like, people just plonked in front of you. Yeah. At two minutes notice. And you're like, and really influential people. Like, there was, uh, you know. there was dickheads? No, genuinely, there wasn't. There Tell wasn't. There, no, there wasn't. There wasn't. There was genuinely not. Um, there was, you know, hor- I think like champion jockeys and champion horse um, owners that people would give their left, uh, you know, left ball to interview. And I'm here. I don't know anything about him. And I have to learn really quickly. And it was interesting because I didn't want to know much about him. I didn't want to know what Google knew. I wanted to know something else. Yeah. I didn't want to be the, oh, you know, how is uh, Starlight looking for today? I wanted to know, you know, what do you have for breakfast this morning? Or how did you sleep last night? Or what do you drive? You know, or what goes through your head this morning? I didn't, I didn't want to know about the horses or the... the did you ever shite yourself? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Different, <laughs> no, I get you, I get you. Yeah. I wanted a different take on it. And it was the same with the, anyone else that I was trying to interview. But you had to be respectful because there was girls there, there was a, a women's football team that had won a big cup and it was huge at the time. And again, I didn't follow them and I didn't know much about them. And I had two or three minutes to learn as much as I could. And when that was, when was the last time they won and what it meant to them? And you're trying to bring in the Women's World Cup and how important it is to be promoting women's football. And Did you find it hard to be dressed up every day? And all oh, that? Jesus, that was painful. I That was painful. And you know what I found really stressful? You know, I was there and I used some suits I had myself and then I got other suits and then some suits were sponsored. The pressure, it, there's a genuine um, pressure from people to see what you're going to be wearing the next day. Really? Yeah. From who? From your followers, from people that are genuinely interested in, in following along. In, in a lovely way, like not in a... Not you should a, tell Kieran that because he wears some mad stuff. Oh, I couldn't get away with some of the stuff he wears now. He looked like a sofa one day. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> funny. The, uh, the velvet, the, the, <laughs> so the gold funny. velvet jacket. Yeah. But like fair play to him, do you know, fair fucks to him for, for doing something a little bit different and, and standing out. Like he was the head judge of the Galway races. So, you know, he had to stand out and I wouldn't have the balls to do that. Yeah. And uh, is he judging the women? Yeah, yeah. He was judging. He was one of the judges of the best dressed lady on the Thursday. It's like the Kanye West. <laughs> the What's video that? of Kanye West No I don't He's know there. that I like the Gaga songs And she sponsors Or she promotes uh, Polaroid camera But what the fuck Does she know about photographs <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that I didn't, No, no, no. But I love Kanye West There was There was kind of A bit of a pressure then And I can see how Fashion And I said this on my stories One day I said I, I, I could never be A fashion influencer Because There's an awful lot of comment 
you know, every day you're you're going up and you're getting your suit and people are like dying to see what suit you're wearing today. Not in a perverted way or... Like yeah, I know a, what you mean. Just in a... In a just, I, I don't know how you do it. So then you would... So the suits Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were lovely and then Thursday I had to wear this one from Athlone Town Centre. Who picks the suits? You pick them. Yeah. I had some say in some of them, yeah. So I got to go into some of the shops and, and decide, pick between two or three. But then the Thursday in the Athlone Town Centre one, it was kind of like, there was only, it was, it was between two. And... To tell you what to wear. And I wasn't really happy with the one I picked on the day. And then, I wasn't, I wasn't very comfortable in it. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel like it was a nice fit and I didn't feel good in it. You know what I mean? You want to feel comfortable in it. Mm. And I didn't feel comfortable leaving the hotel in it. And I just felt the pants were... <sighs> I have these fat thighs, like, you know, I have big legs and a fat arse. And I just didn't feel comfortable in it. And then you post it and then the comments all start coming in. Oh, don't know about that one. No way. Oh, they were instant now. The Thursday, they were instant on the Thursday. And I was already... Men or women? Um, or mostly women. Mostly women. The don't odd, like your suit. The odd man. The odd man. Uh, yeah, yeah, they'd be, they'd be like that, yeah. Uh, na- no, the navy shirt doesn't work with that suit. And um, so then you're getting slated at 11 o'clock in the morning. You're in trying to get ready for your day. You're starting at half 12. And then, uh, you know, I'm not saying this in a bitchy way. That's just the way it is. It didn't really bother me. But I'm just, my point is, I'd never, I could never be a fashion influencer. I could never have people commenting on my clothes every day. I think you've mad a slave. It's like I'm looking. At, you've manager now, don't you? Yeah, but it's not as it's not as glamorous as that. Oh, you're big stuff, right? But anyway, it's no. really cool. Like you're there and you do you. I've ne- you actually opened up a makeup shop and you know fuck all about makeup. <laughs> I'm watching you do a story where you're opening up. Isn't that wasn't that it? A make- makeup shop? Yeah, it was a makeup shop that yeah. sell makeup. Yeah, you don't wear makeup. No, no. But it was genius from the be perfect point of view. Be Perfect contacted my manager and said, we need somebody to come in and cause a bit of a hullabaloo and get people talking. So I did. I went in and caused a bit of mayhem and left. Dropped the mic and left. I didn't have to promote any makeup or... It was genius because that's what brand awareness is all about. Yeah. Just get people talking. Like, get people talking about the new shop opening. He didn't ask me to go in and promote the brand, promote the makeup. I didn't have to go in. I didn't have to go in and start talking about the palette. All I had to do was tell people, this shop is open. Yeah. That's mad. What's it like having a manager to take pressure off? It definitely does. It definitely does. It, when you say like, when you say I have a manager, like you make it sound like uh, this woman who's in my office and yeah. sitting there. And it's not like You hired that. her it's and not, she's sitting in your office there in your building and she just looks no, at you. No, it's not like that at all. It's not like that. It's an agency. So they, they manage loads of content creators and MCs and influencers. And they, but does it make your life easier? Like, is it, it does. does it, it, cuts out, it cuts out a lot of shit because a, an awful lot of people expect you to be a public service. That's the thing that's the hard, that's the hardest thing. And when you're from Mayo and you're doing things in Mayo, the majority of businesses and uh, like societies and organizations just seem to expect you to do things because you're your man from Mayo. You're the golden goose mayo. But we'll pay your one. You? We'll pay your one to come down from Dublin. Adam, aren't you the golden goose mayo? No, I'm not the golden. You're the goose. golden goose mayo. Why do you say that? Because I always know it. There's no one in mayo does what you do. In what sense? Who else in mayo has done the things that you've done? Like Garen Noon is is the biggest star in mayo. He's big, all right. Yeah. I don't know whether he's the biggest star in mayo. No, he is. He is without question. He's the biggest social media star in mayo. Yeah, but like he's not a business that all you you promote businesses. Like Garen promotes himself. Garen's like kind of ah, you know like yeah. he does his own thing. You promote businesses. You promote Mayo. You promote tourism. You go around to hotels. You're going into uh, businesses. You promote businesses. You promote Mayo as a good place to be. Go shop, stay. Yeah, that's not the same things what Garen does. You're not understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just saying, I've said it before a million times, he doesn't get enough appreciation for it, and you may owe people you'd want to get a fucking grip of yourselves. I Look don't get... Look after your man. I don't get appreciation. Yeah. Give him loads and loads of money. <laughs> no, but it's it's the same for any content creator, and I can only use Mayo as a reference, but I mean, um, they're very quick to, to pay influencers from the East Coast to come down, uh, but they don't realise, sure, like we have 40% of our followers or 50% of our followers are in Dublin. Mm. And the other 
there's another 40% of them or 50% of them that are outside Mayo and only 10% of them are in Mayo. So why aren't you using the ones that are there? But there's an awful lot. My point is there's an awful lot of, oh, sure, he'll do it. He's from Castlebar. And you're like, well, well, what? she got 15,000 euros to do. Now, she, fair enough, she has half a million followers. But why can't you talk about giving me a few bob for it? And that's the thing that annoys me the most. Yeah. There's like, it's just expected. That it you, understands the business. You yeah. Know, you're trying to... But anyway, I'm not the golden goose in Mayo, definitely yeah, not. golden goose. Quack, quack. Um, no, goose don't do that, do they? What did they go? <laughs> 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 Asher, you were, um, you were hanging with Garen and Yorks and you seen the potential in him before he was massive. No, I didn't. He, was, uh, he, he was, will you stop? You picked him out of the gutter the same way as I picked you out no, of the gutter and put a knee at the end of your name and sent you off down the road. I had nothing to do with his success whatsoever. Uh, he's a funny man. He's a legend. He's doing yeah, very well. I only met him at your show. And he's a gentleman. Yeah. And he deserves every bit of success. Yeah, he's very funny. He gets. Yeah. Shaved the beard though. He, <laughs> he looked got, totally different. He got paid to shave the beard. I know, but he looked totally different. Yeah. Isn't it amazing when you see someone with a beard and then you've never seen him without a beard but and I then lo- the beard's gone. It's I like, love that. Like, I love that story. Mm. Like, you have Garen here that was, that was slogging away, doing gigs for a couple of hundred euros. Yeah, and then he's massive. And lugging in gear and lugging out of gear. And then he turns into this huge household name. For just being himself. And brands paying him to shave his beard. Yeah. Like that's a, just a massive it success is. story. It's mad. It's, it's class. Mad. It just shows like it, nobody knows. B or B homes make your dream home a reality. We do it all from start to finish. Your one-stop shop to becoming a homeowner. Log on to brbhomes.ie did you enjoy the show in Cork? I enjoyed the show in Cork. I, w- I was a bit taken aback by it. So you had nothing to do when he be there? All I had to do was I go d- down and you said, I'll just bring you out because you know me, I don't like being prepared for anything. Mm-hmm. Just arrive down, come out, have a chat. Yeah. And I sat there and I was looking at it from start to finish and I was stressed out looking at it. It just seems like an awful lot of moving parts. I'd die. I'd, I'd, have, I'd be there, fuck, there's a lot of people there. Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't have to do that and just arrive, and I just was there. Oh, I, I wouldn't be able to do this, but it was it was really entertaining and stuff. But I was there. I couldn't put myself through all that. I wouldn't have the ability. You do have the ability. No, no, and I you will have, do it. I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd love to do a show, but I'd like to just uh, arrive. Like all that production, you put some amount of work into it, like the videos, and then you. You bring the person on, then you talk about stuff, and then you have a guest, and then you have a band or a few people playing. Like it's a, it's an actual show. It's not just a live podcast. Yeah. You know, you're not there chatting. Yeah, I know to, what you mean. You yeah, know, it's yeah, a, it yeah. was a full on show. But it's a you, lot of moving parts. Were you nervous going on stage? No, I wasn't. Well, it was you who I was going to talk to. No, I, I wasn't nervous going on stage. I was nervous for you when you were going on stage. At the start of the night? At the start. Yeah. Because I walked in and I'd never done anything like that before. And it's like a lot of people. It's a, it's a big show. And yeah. then when your man came out and done the song and then you're there with your piece of paper and I could see you. You're, you're looking at the piece of paper. You're on. In the zone. In the zone. And I'm there. Ooh, that seems hard. <laughs> because if I fuck up or I say anything wrong. It's your baby, not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and I, it's well within the realm of possibility. Like, I'm there thinking, I just don't want to get him in trouble. I just don't want to get him in trouble. Uh, but the beauty about shows like that is you don't have the, the trolls there. Like, the, the, the people that go to them shows are there to support you. Mm. And they're, they can take a joke and they're up for the crack. Do you know what I mean? You can yeah. get a, you can get away with a little bit more at a show than you could online because yeah, because they're there for you. They're there for you, and they're there willing you on. And you know, like we were even talking about. I said, uh, did you? I said to people like, do you think David is sexist? And the whole crowd shouted, no. Yeah. But like, there's a huge contingent online that will say you are sexist. Yeah, yeah. Or that you. you're chauvinistic. They're only drifting in. They're only and drifting in and out. It's like me, me but, and you done videos today. Yeah. And I've got. I could look at my phone now. I probably have an extra thousand followers. Mm. They'll be gone by Wednesday. Yeah, they like <laughs> you know, I go tomorrow and do something, and I begin. You are a pig. Yeah. You're a bollocks. So, um, I I said to everyone, "Do you think David sexist?" And they all shouted, "No, no." And I was like, "How do you not think that? Like, did you not seen any of his videos?" Mm. And then I played the video of you uh, stuck in the ice that morning, <laughs> yeah. and you were giving women advice, and you said, "Ladies, 
Uh, it's really frosty this morning. Just a little bit of advice. If you're driving this morning, pull over, ring a man and tell him to come and get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And a video went viral. But everyone at the show really enjoyed that. Mm. But if you shared that tomorrow online, oh, yeah, you'd be, be cancelled. Yeah. Cancelled. But do you know what's nice about the live show? I really liked. Mm. And I, I bet you you think it's great too. It's great to actually meet them people. Do you know yeah. the people that are actually hardcore followers that they actually are for you. Definitely. And it's great to actually see him in person and oh, this is who we are. You're that person. That's what I love about it. And that's why I know you like about it. You're actually getting to meet these people and you know they're the people. That's just something I've learned over the last few shows. Like the first show I was really nervous and scared and I didn't know what to expect. But now you're like, you know that these people are there. Like they have your back. Yeah. They're there for the crack. And, and you forget that because people message in there they're listening to you on the podcast every day. Like yeah. They're listening to your podcast. They're listening to you for two hours every day or whenever you release the podcast or they go home at night. And that's why, like, no matter how shit, <laughs> say I've had a shit year. You know I've had a yeah, shit year. Like, yeah. everyone, anyone has a shit year. But I'm not going to go on to my story and tell everyone, ah, oh, another terrible day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, because they're, they're just looking for a release. How dare they do this to yeah. me? People just want to come in the evening lay down before they go to bed at night or have a shite and watch your story and just have a little bit of a break. You know, they don't want to hear you whinging and, and shouting. Yeah. And it's just great to be able to meet him. I, I, that's what I would like about the live show. That's why I'm... I, I'm loved, so I loved the end of the show in Cork when we were all on stage and Garen was singing The Rattling Bog and you turned to me and you said, can I take my phone out? Mm. And you, I just, I just felt such joy from you. Yeah, it was amazing. That, that really made my night. You were yeah. like, can I, was, take, can I cool. take a video? And I was like, yeah, work away. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool because I, I've never done that before because I'm not, um, I don't like large crowds. I'm yeah. not good out. I don't go out an awful lot. Yeah. And a few times I've went out now since I started my social media platform and because I don't go out and because it's only, a ha- you were there one of them, Stags. Carrick and Shannon. Very difficult. Oh yeah. I, I'm not that guy. And when you're out and at a certain time people get very, very drunk and they don't know they're doing that and that but they're all over you and they're jumping around and I find it stressful. And that's what I had thought. That was my perception of the live shows until you've done it. But like you said, they're there for you. They're not... Um, it's a totally different buzz. Mm. Yeah, they've more respect for you. Yeah. Because Are you looking forward to the, the next one now? The big one? Oh, no, I am. Yeah, I am. And I'm looking forward to going back to Castlebar. And, you know, because we've done the three shows now, we've done Castlebar, we've done Donegal and we've done Cork and we've learned something from all the shows. They were all very different. Mm. They were very, very different shows. I'm just looking forward to getting back and having a bit more structure and a bit more confidence. And we've got two surprise guests and just a few more tricks up our sleeve. Who are the surprise guests? <laughs> they're, they're a surprise. <laughs> but I tell you one thing, 99.9% of people think it's you. It's not me. No. and I would only love if it was me. And if it wasn't the 23rd, because, and I even said it to Vicky, and it was just, I'm working... Until the 22nd I know And on the 22nd Is the day that I'm Actually going shopping With the kids And I have to get Everyone their presents And stuff And then it'll be just But It'd I'd be cool if we were done. Doing this though To throw people off the scent And it was you actually I Yeah heard. But well, we're it's not, not. <laughs> It's not uh, I was thinking actually What I would love to do Is get you to record The intro I got oh. Joe Biden to, to do the last one So I'd love to get you To do the intro To have you part of it I, got, I could do that So you would like you know, you sit even sitting on your chair here at the podcast studio and uh ladies and gentlemen, blah blah blah. You know. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well I'd we'll do that. that. We'll we'll record something then after this. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we'll get you to because honestly, and uh, uh, you know, when I go out now it's like, Where's Cody? Huh. Or, you know, is Cody one of the special guests? Um, I get that a lot. So I am looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the new Jeep. Where the fucking start that joke? So you were six months waiting for it for a start. I was waiting for that for it. You know how long I was waiting for that. You and were... then I had to sell the other one. That was a fucking nightmare. Well, how do you mean? So what, like, put that into context for us. Well... You were selling the other one privately. I was selling the other one privately. To buy the new one. To buy the new one. Because Ford said, oh, Jeep's coming in. And I said, right, will I sell it now? And they were there. Yeah, yeah, sell it now. It should be in now in a few weeks. So I went and I saw my Jeep. That was difficult enough to sell, you know, because you have so much fucking dickheads ringing you. And they're only young lads messing. And you have to start to deal with that. That was a nightmare. Mm. And then I sold it, and no Jeep. Oh, it's held up. It's held up. And then I have no Jeep. And I'm waiting for how long? For Six months. You didn't sell your Jeep in January, though. No, I sold, it, I sold my Jeep in, on the around 14th or 15th of February. Yeah, okay. But I didn't get my Jeep until, sure, it was July. 
Oh no! Yeah, right, right, right. And like, you have, and it was so funny because you'd have loads of people thinking, oh, "I'd say Cody is no jeep at all. I'd say Cody is no money." Oh, Cody, right. do you know, like, get everyone to be thinking, and I wouldn't let anyone think any different. Sure, look, whatever they think themselves. But then the jeep came, and the last time that I got the last Raptor, remember, I got Ford to put on the lights and put on the bars and the yokes. I didn't, didn't really like the cut of the jeep. Do you know? Right. Didn't really. Uh, so I was going to get my own man, Morgan Matter, to put them on. Shout out to Morgan, right? Yeah. So collected the other Jeep and I said, right, I'm going to fuck off now and I'm going to get it done myself. Uh, don't put anything on it. I'm just going to collect it and go. Yeah. Went down, collected the Jeep. Delighted to be getting it. I was so excited about getting it. Petrol Raptor. You know, this is this is what I've been waiting for. And got in and the collision sensor <laughs> was alarming away. Beep, 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 beep. So I rang him and I was like, had there something wrong with the collision sensor? It keeps, it keeps like banging so at me it thinks, here it thinks you're going to hit something yeah and he goes ah look it's uh, something small we'll, we'll link up to when we get home you know everything's on Wi-Fi now oh right I didn't know that so got home and they said oh we don't know so it's just something small we'll look at it next time it comes down so I brought it down to Morgan to get the bull bars put on it so you're driving around the whole time and this thing beeping off just turned off sensors just turned off the front parking sensors and the okay sensor. well, that, yeah so well, that's annoying on a brand new car now a little bit annoying but nothing fucking major I know okay. so Went down to Morgan's and we, were, he had a Raptor and I had my Raptor and we were just getting ready to put on the bars and we were just looking at it and Morgan goes, your number plate is way different than mine. And I was there, oh, it is too. In and what goes, sense? It was down real low. Okay. And I was like, oh, fuck, it is too. And he goes, I bet you that's why the collision sensor isn't working properly. Why? Because the Raptor comes in with its own number plates around. Right. And the garage... Decided to take that one off to put on their own, and must have put some young lad put it on and drilled <laughs> the bumper loads of times. No and, way. Yeah, and drilled into where the collision sensor and stuff is and blocked off everything and just made sure you the bumper right. <laughs> so I messaged him. Joke. Yeah, I messaged him. Hey, my bumper's in shy. This is why the collision sensor is on. Those holes in it. Holes in it, and this the collision sensor was blocked. Just everything was blocked. You know, the number plate was down too low. Okay. So I had to try and get that done and then there was a rattle in the dash. Are you, where are you going? Go on, just keep going there. What are you doing? Was I, was I making noise? You're not making that yet, go on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go on, go on, go on, oh, he's go on. a fucking pedantic bastard. See, you've no headphones on so you can't hear it. See? Just leave that microphone alone. When you, where was I until you rudely interrupted me and threw me off? So, oh yeah, there was a rattle in the dash. So, squeaking. <laughs> really annoying, right? This rattle in the oh. dash. In the console behind the screen, and uh, I rang about that, and then they were there. Yeah, they will do that the next time that it comes down. And I was there. You know, like, you know, you can't put a number play. I'm not going to let you take out the dash. Do you know? So I'd rather know what's going on. But it's like it's only going tomorrow to get all that stuff done. Like it's just it just took so long. And, and what took, was the rattle in the dash? I don't know until tomorrow. It's going getting done tomorrow. Six months later. Mm. So you've you've had to listen to that for the last six months. Or? Listen to the engine roar Just drive the shit over And there's a problem With the Matrix headlights They keep blinding everyone So everyone thinks That you're a cunt Flashing the lights at them oh. So it needs an update On the headlights But other than that I love it Do you love it? Ah I like I don't like it As much as the last one Why? I, I don't know So this one's petrol And the last one was diesel Yeah And this one's super fast Yeah What's the difference Like in the brake horsepower Or Oh, uh, another 200 horsepower in the... Thing. Why would anyone want a petrol Raptor? It's a horrible financial decision, but it was really cool. But I, I wanted one. But just help me understand. Like, I, I can't understand why somebody would want a petrol Raptor. I tell, I tell you why. I, I love cars. Yeah. I love them. And my favourite car is my M5. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, but I can't, the M5 that you don't have, yeah. The M5 that I don't have, it's parked up. But <laughs> what else could I buy... Out of the company Because I can't make, get Ant out of the company Do you know The company is so hard To get Ant out of it Like yeah. I take my wages But there's nothing else In it for me Do you know Me and Vicky We take our wages Out of the company Say so everything I make At the timber And everything that I make At the shop It goes back into the podcast It goes back into The business Yeah. And anything else You take over You're just going to be Taxed everything So like the only thing That I get for myself Out of the business That I can get Any fun out of For me Is a vehicle Right And what else can you get that is commercial. That's 400 horsepower. Think about it. But you can't claim petrol. No, but it's a company expense. I just can't get back to that. 
Ah, oh, okay. It's still okay. a company expense. Yes, yes, yes. I have you now. Have but you I now. just can't get back to that. Right. And when I bought the Jeep, I had planned on getting something smaller to go to work in Yorks and just have that as something that I just always have. Like an old van? Yeah, just an old van. Like an old 10 grand van? Was it? Did you, was telling you about that? <laughs> the whole world has gone mad, right? So I want to get a small little van. Right, so David wants to park up the <clears throat> Raptor during the Just use the it week. for good wear. Right. Just use it for... Keep the mileage down on it. Yeah. Yeah. And use it for gallivanting at the weekends. Yeah, exactly. And then buy a little run around like an old caddy. For going to the wood. Or a berlingo for going in and out of work. Yeah. Throwing the boots into the back of. So back in the day, when you were buying a cheap little van, if you rang for a thousand euro, something for a thousand euro, yeah. that was a cheap van. Yeah. You know, a thousand, two thousand euro well, was a cheap van. Somewhere in old Tesh it. It'll do a year. Yeah. So I was looking for a decent, decent enough van and I seen this ad on Dundee and it was a caddy didn't have much pictures on it, so I rang your man just to ask him what miles are on it. Do you know is there a DOE on it? Whatever, and I rang him and I said, "I'm just ringing about the caddy." Was it a garage or a private garage? What kind of what caddy is that? Is it the carriage on the caddy on Dundee? There's only one picture. On. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I says, well, "What what's she like and what mileage is on it?" I my mileage is on it. I think there's two forty on that now or something like that. I said, "Right, right." And what's she like? Well. It's a 10 grand van. It's a, it's a... It's a 10 grand van. It's a 10 grand van. I know, sir. Right. That, what, was, that was his response. Yeah. Well, what's it like? Sure, like, it's a 10 grand van. And I said, but there's no pictures on it. Like, is it a good... He said, look, I'll be honest with you, we took it in as a trade-in. And we haven't looked at it. We haven't pulled it in. But if I pull it in and we go take a look at it, you know, it'll reflect on the price. <laughs> it's a 10 grand van. And I just said to myself, imagine saying that it's a ten, like ten grand's not. He's talking about ten grand as if it's a, a thousand euros. Yeah, like I'd expect that if it, someone rang and does look at it, it's a thousand euros van. Euro Stop van. annoying me, yeah, whole. It's a two grand van, you know. But ten grand van, ten grand. Yeah. And when Garrett and Greg bought that, you know the baby bull nose I had, mm. that was fourteen thousand or something, fourteen fifty brand new plus the van, brand new. And now that same van is about eighteen, nineteen thousand plus the van. And what year was the caddy you were looking at? Oh, jeez, it was fucking, I think it was a 17, a 16 or 17. And what annoyed you is he was just so blasé about Just so blasé about it, yeah. It's just 10 grand. It's 10 grand van. Take it with you. Yeah, it's 10 grand van. Either take it or leave it. Don't do be annoying me over 10 yeah. grand. Oh, I'm not going to tell you anything about this 10 grand van. Either give me the 10 grand van or, or <laughs> don't give me the 10 grand van. I don't care. I just thought it was a bit mad. So how did it end? I just fucking never rang him back at all. What a fucking dickhead. I was there and I don't fuck that shit. Like. But he obviously, there's obviously a lot of demand for that type of van though. He has no interest in dealing with anyone. It'll just be, yeah, maybe. some fella's going to come in and give him 10 grand for that. But it, just, it just, it just, put, it puts you off. I hate, say when I ring people, I hate when people know who I am. Right? Because I rang one lad about a van. Because you're goes, loaded. They all think that you have a hip money and I'm going to this lad. He is loaded. People think it's the other way around. I'll give you a van for nothing. No. No. They want to fucking drive their Mickey he, up your hole. He That's is rotten with money, this yeah. fella. And and when he comes in to pick it up, we're going to get another two or three thousand euros worth advertising out of him. Yeah. We're going to ask him to plug that, it that and promote it. That was actually a funny it. thing. When I bought the Citroen, right, so... When I rang looking around for the Citroen... Okay, I don't mention characters. any names now. No, no. Oh, okay, Rang around looking for the Citroen. Yeah. And um, done the deal, got the Citroen, and I tried to get mats off him. Right, so I rang him and I was there. I went down and I looked at it, and I said to your man, there was a hole in the mat on one side. Right. And I says, can you throw in a set of mats? No, that's the lowest price. Like, I only got him down 500 euro on the... Just on the, on floor the mats. There was no mats in them. How was there no there mats? There was a big it? hole in the mat. All right. Oh, there, was okay. a, there was a big hole. And I was there. Any chance I could get a set of mats on the front? And he was there. No, I can't go any lower. Like he gave me five hundred euro off it. That's as much from the price that was on the. Were you trading anything? No, buying a stray. Well, there was five hundred there to take off it if you were Th- buying. That's a what I was thinking. Of course, course. of course. It's Any a, donkey knows that. Well, in a buyer's market. No, a seller's market it was, obviously. Do you know, I, I, I was trying to get this He has a price at 21 500 it was, and he goes, uh, it I'll was, give it to you for 21 It was almost Let's 30 just, grand, the car. Right. So, done a little to and fro, and he wouldn't give me any more off. It wouldn't do the mats, grand. But I just bought the fucking car, whatever. And what are we talking about? 50 euro for mats? Whatever it was. Yeah. So then, they must have found out who I was, 
And next thing, they rang me on the day that we were coming down to collect it. And he goes, oh, Mr. Cody, didn't know it was yourself and you're coming down. And we were just saying if we could take a few pictures and maybe some videos. And I was there, there's no videos. There's no pictures. I was there, I tried to get a set of mats off you. I was there, I'm not about that shit. I was there, if you weren't going to help me out and get me a pair of mats, you're fucked if you're going to get any videos. And he and when we came down, he said, uh, they took more pictures. He said, do you mind if we put that up on... Our, our page said, no don't put any, anything up on your page so we'll give you a set of mats it's a bit fucking late now oh he was going giving you the mats for the pictures and stuff but sure only because they knew who I was yeah but let's put this into perspective then right because if you start being the performing monkey and you're David Cuddy and you're uh, like uh, um, if you're endorsing this garage you've nearly a million followers on Snapchat mm. like you're mega mega famous oh big deal now in the, deal. in the agri circles yeah and let's just Let's just call a spade a spade. Like, you're very influential. I'm seriously influential. <laughs> you know, and are you... <laughs> when you, stop, when you stop touching that mic. You were so pedantic about the mic. Every time you touch it, you can hear it. Really? Yeah. See, well, why didn't you give me a set of earphones? Okay, well, just stop touching it. I'll try it. Right. Uh, I don't know what to do with my hand. <laughs> so you are, you are very influential. So, like, there's great value in you promoting a business and you saying, geez, the lads were great to deal with there and I bought... You know, they gave me the car, lovely set of mats. For the sake of 50 euros, or whatever these mats would have been, they definitely would have sold a couple of cars. Yeah, but even if um, you didn't, I was just normal Joe with no followers, when you think he'd give you a set of mats. Absolutely. That's you're going in, you're not trading, you're not doing that. Very hard to believe how you would buy a brand new van with no, with no new mats in no, it. No, this wasn't a brand new. No, sorry, but not brand yeah, new, yeah. but, but yeah. it's new to you. Yeah. I, I, how could you even enjoy it without mats with holes in it? I know, I was, I was a bit of a night over that. But that's just uh, that's why I've I think I've I've saw I saw the advertising end of it. And the other end of it is like there's there's content creators being paid to go into garages and promote garages. Yeah. Like physically being paid cash. My favorite is the brand ambassadors. Yeah, the fo- fo- oh, well, go on, go on. This is a bit close to home now for me, but go on. Uh, no, wait, you brand ambassador. No, I'm not. I'm not, but I I um I as you know, I'm just best friends with Karen Kennedy. And That's different. He's your friend. Yeah, yeah. But I would, I they would be my garage, and I'd promote them as much as I can, and I would take a bullet for them. I'm not a brand ambassador. I own my own car. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, but I just see the. I would call myself a brand ambassador of Kennedy Motors. I don't, I don't think think there's anything wrong with being a brand ambassador. Right. What I find funny is when you get asked to be a brand ambassador, mm. and then when you ask for a certain amount of money, because I don't want your car. I, I, I'm not driving your own car for nothing. You, you need to pay me. Yeah. I'm not going to go pay a benefit in kind and drive around your car and you're not going to pay me. Like I, I don't want the the glory of driving around a car. I can buy me own car. But when you see um, the same crowd that wouldn't give you a few pounds to do something like that because it's a job, you know, yeah. you have to do it. You'd pay tax on this sort of stuff. They'll give to these GA stars and just hand them out to them left, right and centre. And they drive out. They don't give a fucking shy. Do you get a lot of people looking for... Like, do you know what I was on to you about people in Mayo just assume, oh, he'll do that. Yeah. Do you get a lot of people looking for shout outs or looking to come on the podcast or looking to... The podcasting is very funny. Because they know that you will bring an awful lot of exposure yeah. to them or their business. Mm. So the, uh, I do find that you have to get them as well. People just ring you out of the blue and they'll actually go, I'm willing to come on to your podcast. Yeah. You know, like, I, I want to do this. But all they want to do is promote their business. When you even say to them, yeah, but can I ask anything? Like, what, as, what, what's your background? What, what story have you? Yeah. And it's like they, they just want to use you as a leg up for their business, but they don't want to give you something in return. Do you know what's crazy about that is the, your, your podcast could have more downloads than the local radio station has yeah, listeners. It absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd never have the cheek to ring a radio station and say, can I get some free ads there? Yeah. Can I just get ads? Um, would you do a few ads for me there? Know, but so for podcasters, then they go... You know, I wouldn't. I'll, I'll come on your podcast if you I'm want. Like, I, like podcasting is, it's a game changer, isn't it? It's it, hey, it, sure, look at it. it's 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 completely to, pulled me out of the gutter. Yeah, to be able to sit and have a conversation with someone and not worry, just have a real conversation, or even for me, listening to podcasts. It's like the last podcast you done with that guy that had the criminal past, Peter. That yeah. was, but it's very hard to find those people. It's it's very hard to find them, but but. But it's very you're going to talk to someone even for when I'm doing the podcast I do the podcast more so for me and when you are listening to someone you're talking to someone for two hours you know exactly who that person is at the end of it you know there's no to hide mm. like so you often have people when you come on and you're just there 
I want to see where they're coming from. And you get you have these conversations and you're just there. Oh, that was that was really good. Or it was, oh, I don't know about that. But you, you go away with more information than you went in with. Yeah. You, you, you learn more about the world. And your favorite thing is that you actually go, oh, I used to think that. But no, I'm not so sure. You know, you, you, you change your, perce- your perception. Because I have talked to people and I've went, oh, I don't know if I don't know if I agree with this. And then yeah. you walk away and you go, oh, maybe I do. It and op- sometimes it's the other way around. It opens you go, your mind up a bit, yeah. yeah. But you never get that with radio or television now. It's No, no, because there's, there's other people in control or they don't have enough time to give it. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I'd have 20 people a week saying that they want to be on the podcast. But then, like you say, it's just to promote a business. Yeah. And the podcast would be boring. It's very hard to find people that will tell you an honest Th- account it. of their life. And people prefer when you're honest. People and it's, yeah. And, and it's very difficult for them. It is. You know, I, I, would, I would record a podcast and then I would send it to them and I'd say, I want you to listen to it. I want you to make sure you're happy with it. And then get back to me if there's anything you want taken out or if mm. you're not happy with it, we'll bin it. And, and three... Uh, three... I don't know if I should... Yeah, I'm just going to say it anyway. Three ladies this season cancelled on me. And uh, and a lot of people would say to me, how come you don't have more women? Mm. I can't get them. Yeah, I'm saying. I can't get them. You know, and I'll definitely get a message from somebody after hearing this going, I'll come on. Yeah. I'll, I'll come on. I'll, I'll chat to you. But then when I say to them, well, this is what I want to talk about or can we talk about this, that or the other? Oh, no, no, no. I'll just talk about my uh, garden business that I have there. Yeah. And it's hard to get people on and you appreciate people that do come on because people that do come on take the time to come on and have a conversation with them. You're there taking like fair play to you. But you know what? Regardless of what their business is, if they came on and just had a chat with you, it, it would do more for their business mm. than coming on plugging the business. Yeah. Because no one would tune in. No. No one would tune in. It's a bit like Car- Carlo Grady who I had on from Clare Island. Like a mad story of mm. a fella putting whiskey on a boat for three years and hoping it works and in three years time this whiskey could be piss do you know that's the only whiskey I haven't drank yet <laughs> really yeah it, that's probably gone up in value no more than your van but that's why because of the all the timber and all the like the way it's packaged in Yorks I couldn't bring myself to well I I got you that for uh, Bruce yeah arriving into the world and I said to you please open that and enjoy it couldn't because people don't open them and enjoy them because there's only two or three hundred bottles, they keep them and they're on a mantelpiece somewhere. And I've one on my mantelpiece at home, but I don't drink whiskey. I don't enjoy it. So it's an ornament for but me. But that wasn't packed the way it's packed. I'd have a drink. But drink it. What are you doing with it? Because I've had people message me. I've been given a lot of expensive whiskey. Oh. And I drank excuse it. Excuse me. And I drank it and people would be there. I can't believe you drank that. I give that to you as a collector. And I was there. Sorry, I didn't what know. What are you collecting it for? For sure what? I don't know. People do it. Yeah. And I, but I drank them all, but I couldn't drink that one because it's so nicely packed and the timber and drink the little it leather, up. the leather hinges and drink the kind that comes with it. I know a fella who drank it and put tea into it and put it back on the shelf. No way. Yeah. He drank the bottle, put tea into it, sealed it back up, put it on the shelf. No one knows. That's a great idea. Yeah. No one knows there's no whiskey in that. Well, now everyone's going to know because I'm going to drink it at Christmas now. Yeah, do <laughs> it. Fill it with tea. Fill it with tea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a true story. But they're the, it's hard to get those people and, um, and I completely appreciate where they're coming from. It's hard to open up and hard to tell stories. That's my favourite part about it. Like I had Donegal Daddy on a couple of weeks ago and he has helped so many men. And I'm not exaggerating. The amount of men that have reached out to me and him over the last few weeks and gone to their GP and said they were in a really dark place until they listened to that podcast. And that's just, that, that, that's, cool. that's the highlight of my year. Mm. That's the highlight of my year. Not the Jeep. No, no, honestly, I mean that. And I'm not just saying that looking for brownie points. That's the highlight of my year. Helping, helping a family um, with one of their uh, siblings go into a, a drug addiction place. You know that like drug addiction places can't advertise. Why? They, you have to seek them out. Do you know Why? what I mean? So like at the end of the podcast, we can't say, oh, and if you want to go to such a place, l- log on to drugaddiction.com. I don't understand why. You can't be directly promoting them because you have to seek them out. You have to look for it. You have to be ready to look for that. Huh. Even if your family... And accept that. You know, well, obviously the family the family look for it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But it's not something... You never hear ads for any places like that or you never see it advertised. It's kind of one of the steps. Oh, I didn't really do that. I didn't know that until Peter told me. Really? Yeah. 
because I had said to him, you know, I want to, I want to really advertise where you went and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you can't really like. So what we did was we put a load of helpful links on his website. So when you go to his website, you click on yourpacerecovery.com, click on more. And then there's loads of helpful links for family members or people that are addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, whatever. So there's loads of different links in the one place. Never knew that. Yeah. So that's, I just love that part of it. And when I started doing the podcast, I didn't think that was the furthest thing from my imagination. I just wanted to talk. I wanted it to be a hobby. I wanted it to be an outlet, a bit of crack, a bit of chat, a bit of banter. Is it your favorite thing now? It's definitely my favorite thing. You can just be yourself. You're just chatting away, being yourself for an hour or two. And and then when you get the messages, Paul Quinn has helped people come out to their family and, and now they're living happy lives as as openly gay people. And um, th- someone has taken something from every podcast and I just love that. Anyone ever like uh, give out to you about the podcast? No, thank God. I do find, um, say when I'm doing the podcast, I do think that if everyone that likes every podcast, I'm doing it wrong. You know, mm. because I want it to be different all the time. Yeah. Because that's the way I want to grow the podcast. I want it totally different. So I have this thing. If everyone is, is liking the, one, the the same podcast, I'm not I'm not doing it right at all. I need people hating some of them. No, I, 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 there's two things. I don't get the same listeners every week. Like I'd, I'd often have lads going, oh, I'm not tuned into her. Like Mandy from Catwalk, for instance, like she's my manager. And an awful lot of lads said to me, Oh, I had no interest in listening to that. But then mm. I turned it on and I couldn't turn it off. So they get it into their head like, oh, sure, she owns a model agency. I have no interest in listening to that. And then I love winning them around. Yeah. I love when they go, oh, sure, I did turn it on. And do you know what? It was interesting because we got inside the model's heads and we got inside the model agency head. And it wasn't about the fashion. It was about setting up a business in a difficult time. And, you know, do models eat biscuits? Do you know, and, and do they have to just walk up and down a ramp all day long? Is that their job? And how difficult is it? Like you're showing a different aspect to the life. And I, I, that's what I love about it. Yeah. And then the other thing was I did get shit about the live podcast. Shit or? Not shit, uh, constructive criticism, but I, you know. In what way? Uh, just the, People telling you how they do it. Yeah, exactly. People would tell you how they do it without understanding why you're doing it. Do you know, not everyone in the crowd knows you. Yeah. You know, you, you're, you're putting on a show to, you know, 60% of the people in the audience. And you have to accommodate the 40% of the people. That who are be, being brought along. They're being brought along or they're there because they're a huge fan of Cowboy or they're a huge fan of Garen or they're a huge fan of Eric Roberts. And they don't know anyone else on the lineup. Mm. So you ha- that, there, has I never to, that. there has to be a balance of you. If you rocked out and did the show assuming everyone's seen every story you've ever done. Half the audience will be It'd left. kind of like coming on here with your friend and having in-jokes all day. Yeah, exactly. You know, in here, just talk in-jokes all day long. Everyone will be like, what are they on about? And it's a, it's a very tricky thing to do, to bring people along on your journey as to why you're there today with stories from me, like even Donkey Gate with the donkeys walking into my house mm. or uh, all the flat tires I've had with Donald Byrne. And there's loads of people that don't know any of these stories. If you go back through the highlights, mm. I'd often get people going, geez, I never knew about the time you got the flat tire with Donald Byrne or, you know, and the, all these different highlights in your page or trips you've been on. And, um, and you want to convey them in the live show, but bring people along on the journey. So sometimes you have to tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them and then you tell them what you've told them. And then some people go, sure, like, why did you fucking go on telling us about the flat tire? Sure, like, we see, we've seen the flat tire. Yeah. And I've got a bit of that. Speaking of highlights. Yeah. Uh, so you got your your new Jeep. Yes. That was cool. Very cool. Was that the, one of the, say, highlights of the year of something for yourself? Explaining yourself. Yeah. Because you were into your cars. A lot of people don't know you, you're you into your cars. I am. I, I'm, I'm big into my cars. Yeah. I, and, and I've always had a nice car. Mm. And I've always worked really hard to have a nice car. And I don't ask for anything else. Yeah. Do you know, I don't go out drinking. I don't go to the pub at the weekends. I don't smoke. I don't go on mad, lavish holidays. I don't go buying designer clothes. What was it in between? So had you, uh, did you always want one of them? Or were you tie in between buying something or that one? I've been really lucky, David. I've always, I wanted an A4 and I got an A4. I've wanted an A6. I got an A6. I wanted a 5 Series. I got a 5 Series. Um... And then it, it, I was torn between the next thing I wanted was um, a Q7 or an X5. Hmm. 
mm. and I got you know I'm that's this is what I, I'm really lucky with Kennedys because I, I just can go down and drive them. Yeah. So I am somewhat of a brand ambassador, but I'm not. Yeah. You know, I'm just lucky that I that I have that relationship there and I can get to drive them. If Kennedy's there, I, I if he's listening, <laughs> I, I'd really like to be a brand ambassador for that Lamborghini for a while. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think that's going to happen. No, I I can't not. even get into that. <laughs> but um, then it was between the X5 and the Q7. And the Q7 was a Sauron diesel. And I loved the X5. Um, and then James Bond came along. And I'm a huge James Bond fan. Like, that's something people don't know about me. I have every James Bond DVD there ever was. Do you? Yeah, every one from start What's to finish. your favourite movie? I have a few of them. I've It was Pierce Brosnan. I, was, I loved the Pierce Brosnan. Like, I loved the Golden Eye. That was probably my favourite one. And then I'm obsessed with Daniel Craig. Yeah. I just love him. I love What's your favourite one in the movies? Skyfall, probably. Okay. Yeah, if I had to pick one, probably Skyfall. Just love it. And then there was the James Bond with the Discoveries and the Defenders. And I just thought, oh, they're just class. This new shape Defender. Mm. And I just had a horn for the last two or three years for this Defender since the James Bond movie. And then I had the old 90, the 89 uh, Defender 90 last year. Uh, but that was hardship. You know, it was like driving a Zetter. Yeah. It's like driving a tractor. Like there's a gap in the window. Like there's rain coming in on top of you. I, it was, I brought that up you here this time last here, yeah. year. Yeah, and it's hardship. And then um, I traded in my car. I got a car loan, went into the credit union, got a car loan, put a few bob towards it and got this Defender. And if I'm being honest, I'm I'm living beyond my means a little bit, but I'm going to do it for... Um, I. I had it's said, a gorgeous looking I said to Kennedy that I'm going to do it for 12 months I'm going to try and hold on to it for 12 months and we uh, we met for a bite to eat on Friday evening and I said oh, I might only be able to hang on to it for 6 months a different I, gravy than the car I, is I it? think I, it hard. I don't think I'll be able to hang on to it for any longer than 6 months no it's not going to work out what are the things that bother you about it the fuel consumption is definitely a bit too heavy for me you do a lot of driving. I do a lot of driving, yeah. It's just not practical. It's not practical for Neither me. Neither is a 14-inch Mickey, but we make do. Well, I don't, I don't have to make do with that. <laughs> it's just not practical for me, you know. But, it, but it's just a box that I ticked. It was a scratch that I needed to itch. Yeah. And I did it. And I'm going to try and... I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to work my balls off to work as hard as I can until the end of the summer. Keep it till the end of the summer. And then I'll probably have to, to downgrade again. Did you get all the funny comments? You know when you buy something? Yeah. You have a, a mixture of a, yeah. oh, look, that lad is a load of money. You're telling you how much it perceivably cost or, you know, I hope you don't know a mechanic. Yeah. Like when I bought the Ford, Ford, pile of shite. Oh, it's a pile of shite. You should have bought an Amarok. You should have bought a Toyota. Toyota's the only job. Yeah, I get a lot of people saying, oh, I hope you have your A insurance or I mm. hope a tow truck is following you around the place. It's funny, isn't it? They, they're notoriously, they don't have a good name. Any people getting on to you over... Um, Environment and I got a good bit of that, you know. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah, I did get a good bit of that. You've no right to have a diesel guzzler. What about all the fucking birds and the bees? That was interesting because I got a good bit of shit from people that I didn't expect to get it from. Do you know? Fadder. And you're talking, you're talking about Mary there that has been on four holidays this year. Yeah, sliding into my DMs, giving me shit for driving a a three liter diesel Jeep. Yeah, fuck you, Mary. And you're like, Mary, you've been to Dubai four times this year. What's your footprint like? Uh, that's my fucking life. I, that, cut timber, I cut timber for a living. Imagine what I get to listen to. Look, that surprised me. I knew there'd be a bit of it from the from the anonymous profiles or the fake profiles or whatever. But I didn't expect it to be... Yeah, people are people are gone mad into the old environment. Yeah. Well, for me, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, uh, being mad about the environment. I'm fairly fond of the environment. I live in it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, have a bit of logic to your abuse no the, the, the thing you. I don't I don't like is you know they're very quick to jump down your neck over a car but like what are you wearing hmm. or what phone do you have or what's your what's your footprint like what right do you have now fair enough one there was one woman that got onto me and she's a real um, gimp no 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 I wouldn't uh, no honestly she was she was really polite about it oh and she, you know, she was kind of saying to me, Alan, like, it'd be really good if you started using a keep cup and, you know, even just be seen with it on your page a couple of times a day and it would make a, it would make a huge difference. And that got me thinking, you know, that was a lovely way to approach me and, and kind of say, you know, that was just a lovely thing to, to approach an influencer and say, any chance you'd start using an old keep cup there or a reusable cup and I'm not having a go at you. 
but I just think it would make a difference. You have a bit of a following. And I just thought, fair play so, to you. Sometimes. But I thought, I thought fair play to her because the majority of people were just jumping down your throat going, oh yeah, that's great for the ozone layer and, and do you know what I mean? Like, oh, how many icebergs are going to go fucking floating away from that? And I, I, get, I get war out from it. Yeah. And like, especially during, the, oh, fucking war in Ukraine. Do you know them people? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. They want you to talk about it all the time. They want you to talk about something you know nothing about and they want you to fucking just stay. You're, they're not happy unless your story from morning to night is harping on about their point of view. That's all they want. Couldn't be dealing with it. Oh. Do you go to cinema much? You do I, go, you get to go to premieres and everything. I wrote one or two premieres. Ah, you still go. I went to... Did you ever get your pitch talk? Yeah. On the red carpet thing and you... Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I know, what's that like? I hate that. But I do you have it. to? You're, I guess you could avoid it, but you'd be an awful bollocks if you did. So do... do who gets you to go? So the label would contact your manager. Like, so Sony or whoever the label is would contact and say, how are you? Is Alan around to go to the premiere of... Uh, Napoleon and it's in Stella Cinema on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock and you go in and you, you go, you're kind of funneled in a door and then they take your photo and then you go through and you get your food and your drinks and your popcorn and it's class it's a class experience but can you bring someone? yeah you can bring someone yeah so you're not on your own? no no you can bring a person Um, that's the, yeah that's really good that's probably one do of you my enjoy f- doing them? that's my favourite thing to do definitely I love doing that because it's doing what I like doing yeah. Know, I like going to the cinema and that, that cinema that we went to in Dublin Stella Cinemas it was a cool experience like big massive like Chesterfield couches is that what you call them? yeah and they bring you food uh, no they, apparently they do bring food down to you there but you went up and get whatever you want stop and, touching that and you make a nice you, do, <laughs> you don't uh, you don't put your hand in your pocket that's cool yeah it's cool it's a really cool experience I have went cinema so that's long. the height of my I could be at something five nights a week Really? Easily. But Would I, you like to be? No, I can't do that. I don't like social settings. I don't like... I don't like the... The, the gig would be perfect it was, was difficult for me. Like, I was the only fella there. Yeah. And there's this expectation from you to be funny. And from I don't, the minute you walk in? I don't consider myself to be a comedian. And the owner, the owner of the company, Brendan, he owns the whole company. It's this huge multi-million euro company was going around introducing me to everyone as a Galway comedian. <laughs> I'm not from Galway and I'm not a comedian. <laughs> and, it, and even go, right, mate, tell us a joke. And he was like, you know, um, so this Galway comedian, he's going to be running around taking the piss out of everyone and just go with it. And yeah. I, but the majority of people there knew me, except him. He didn't know me. So... I don't like those kind of gigs. And it's mainly because of the dressing up and the photos. Th- that bit? Yeah. I'd, I wouldn't mind going to them if you could sit down in the corner and hide away and just be there and take it all in. But there's an awful lot of... Um, do you think I now people, because of all the photos. things that you do and the gigs and that, you have to, that people expect you to be all dressed up and at these things? And, like, would you, would you be able to go out of your house now and not dressed up? Like, would you wear a tracksuit now going to shop? Yeah. You would? Yeah. It, you, you don't always feel like you have to be dressed to the nines. No, not in town. No, not in Castlebar. No, I never dress up. I never dress up. But I would dress up to go to events. But even at that, uh, at the Napoleon thing, somebody did make comment to me that I was underdressed at it. Fuck, there? Yeah, that I, going into it, I was like, um, they were like, you know, it's really fancy in here. And I was wearing, I think, jeans and a shirt. The shirt wasn't tucked in. I think it was an, uh, just... Casual shirt. Now, as it turns out, I don't think I was. There was there was definitely people less dressed than me. But that's the kind of pressure that that's on you from other content creators. And people use it as an opportunity to get their photo. That's what they do. That's that's their job. That's their and best of luck to them and fair play to them. It's, I couldn't do that. I don't like photos. I don't mind selfies. I don't mind if you come up to me and say, how are you, Alan? Can I get a photo with you? Or would you pose with my mother or pose with my son? I would get that a good bit and I don't mind that. I don't mind amateur photos. I hate posing for professional photos or standing on a catwalk. I don't know. I don't know what to do with my hands. I just, you just, and every single photo, you just look like an idiot. Do you know what I mean? When you're, when you're asked to stand there professionally, I can't pull that off. Have you ever done it? Have you ever had to get photos? I had to do it seven days in, in, in Galway and 
any kind of event I go to. I done, done an event with Rachel Gorry there in Galway a couple of weeks ago and they were all posing for pictures. The Be Perfect event, they were posing for pictures and like even if you look back at some of the photos, like I'm, I look so awkward. I just look like somebody's... But do you just think you look awkward? No, I do. I do, I do, I do. People have, people have been taking screenshots and sending them to me going like, Jesus, Alan, you don't look... You don't look happy there. You don't look comfortable there. Well, thank God I'm one of them lads that didn't do that. I'm sure you probably did. I didn't. Yeah. I never send you videos like that or pictures because I'm too good a friend. Um, what are your goals for 2024? Not to suffer as much. <laughs> Not to suffer as much. <laughs> Not to suffer as much. Hopefully get things running right. I'm saying that for the last two or three years, but it's very difficult. I'm hoping to just get a structure and get everything running in a way that I don't have to do a hundred and fucking something hours a week. You're, I mean. you're always battling. I know. I know. You're always... And like you said to me, you, you said to me, what did you say to me there? I got fucked over. Jesus, man, you're always, always... Like, we talk every day of the week. Yeah. It, and uh, this is a thing people don't know about us. People say, oh, have you been speaking to Cody lately? Or I never see you doing a live. And they just assume that we don't... We're not friends anymore. But we talk every day. Hmm. And you, honestly... Like this has definitely been the most difficult year oh, of making Big Bank. Fucking worst. Uh, between trying to get stock in and get yeah, stock on time and get it, it right, it's, and it's it's so hard. But it's I used to. It's just business, and you're just learning. And I'm busy, and you have kids, and it's just everyone wants to fuck you. Just everyone wants to fuck you. And I I've said it to you a couple of times, and I've said it to a few people. You start to distrust your bullshit beer. So you meet people, you think they're sound. But you, they're not. And you just end up, you, you can't be that nice guy. You have to be a businessman. You know? yeah. And that businessman obviously has to be a prick. And it's just getting the structure right. And you're just having to push on. I just don't want to be doing what I'm doing now. And people don't understand. Like, there's times during the year where you make mistakes or people fuck you over. And you literally would be maybe a week or two from maybe, I could go out of business here, like. I have I could have no money and yeah. then stock comes in or you get money in or you ju- it's just it's fucking stressful very stressful yeah. Even th- this was I did not expect to be doing this this year like I had planned on getting help in to get stock and uh, have another company shipping stuff out and getting a uh, help with it yeah. and then just things change shit falls apart and then boom everything's in your lap again and you can either like you said you can sit and cry about it or you can go onto your story and go, ooh, poor me. Yeah. Or you just get fucking busy. Just get busy getting it done and learn from it and hopefully you don't have that problem again. But I do think that it uh, it's very character building stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, 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 you learn to not trust people but at the same time you can't get through your life without trusting people. You have to learn to trust people but you have to be cautious. You just have to be cautious because people are cunts. Yeah. Like it's very hard. The hardest thing in life that I'm realizing is who you have in your circle and who you can trust. And it's like it's it's so difficult when you get a little bit older. I think once you get to our age, that's when life just does a three sixty. And instead of all the stuff that it gives you, it starts taking. You know, whether that be friends, family, um, your time, your health, your 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 ability to do stuff like you used to be able to do. So you're at that stage of your life where everything's pulling back, but you're busier than you ever were. And you have to just push on because there's so many people counting on you. Do you know, like I have so many people counting on me. Like I have all my kids, I have my wife, and I can't go back to Vicky and go, oh, look, we could we could have no money next week. You know, no, you don't. You just work and you just push on as much as you can. Did, did Vicky know the extent of it this year? Oh, God, no. And how close you were to no. the wind? No, no, never, never. And how how do you deal with that? Like, how do you go home and not? How do you go home and keep that from her? Like, I because, I understand why because, you do it because Vicky has her own. Vicky's running the house with all the kids. And yeah, she's too busy. No, I understand why you do it, but do you find it very difficult to not say, like, she's your person. Yeah, like, do you find it very difficult? Like, I know I know you have friends who you ring and you confide I think in. When you, I could be wrong, but I think it's like uh, when you have kids and you have a wife. I think the most important thing you can do is protect them from. The things that they have to worry about if you can if you can mm. you know so I, I try and not have her worrying about them things but like I, I'm fierce lucky you know brothers I'm not on my own loads of friends I can chat to about stuff you know like Sh- Shane in fairness Shane would have 
back I got a gained heavy weight I pains me back I remember I done the 30 day challenge and mm-hmm. everything if it, was, if it wasn't for all that shit like yeah you, and you look great because my head was fried like literally I wasn't sleeping at night yeah you were yeah do you know it was, it, 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 and you get yourself into these problems like you can, it's not anyone else's fault isn't no. it interesting though why like why is it so difficult because I lack detail that's the first thing right so I lack detail I trust people when I shouldn't and another thing that I do is like you even say things like today remember when we were doing the orders like what did I, I say you know like I, I, I have a bad structure on doing things you know I don't um, yeah. plan for things getting busy and I'm doing all these personal things and you're you're going to true things slowly and then plus I don't I never stop my job I, I do 50 60 hours a week on a machine and then you have to give this business 50 or 60 hours. And then hours. I give my other business 50 or 60 hours. So, yeah. And I can't, and because I can never, I look at the likes of you and, and I go, I, I, there's things I'd love to do, but then there's things I know I don't have the head for. I don't have the head to memorize stuff. I don't have the head to, um, like I, all I want to do is this live podcast. But when I watched you during your live show, and the structure and how professional you are. And I, <laughs> I'm like, just that other guy, aren't I? I don't know what I'm going to say until I say it. And it's just, I'm, I'm bad at that kind of stuff. Do you, know, you get me what I mean? But that's that's your secret sauce, though. Is it? That's your secret. That, and that's, the secret sauce. On that's the, why people will come to your podcast. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah. the tail, the flip side of it is, my life can be very messy. You know, like, it's like I said, it's the only thing I know I can do is work hard. I know I can work hard. I know I can do that. Yeah. I just don't know what else I can do. Do you get me? I don't know what... It's like the structure of things. And then mm. it's probably because I don't uh, plan things properly because I'm always rushing and you're always chasing your tail. And yeah, it's it's difficult. Like, Jesus. Like, uh, but I, but, that, you but are, without complaining, I have... When when you're going through your stuff and you have... Everyone has the same, everyone has the same problems, right? So everyone mm. has problems. Like me talked about today. Nobody gets away with not having shit in their life, right? And drama and whatever. Yeah. But when I, when I go home, no matter how stressful I am, I do have all that. Like that drama, the, the kids and they're fighting and they're doing their things. And you forget everything because you're in the middle of this fucking drama and you love them. Yeah. So like it, it gives you that release that you don't be worrying about them stuff. No, it's the other end of it. Like it says, there's there's a lot more positives than there is negatives. Isn't it frustrating though how you are constantly battling with like stock and companies and mm. you called me the golden goose. Like you you could be the golden goose for these companies, mm. but it's every day is a battle, and then they get greedy mm. and they're like, oh, hang on now. Well, we want more now, or we're we're going to change the goalposts, or this is what we're going to do, and. And then you're left with your dick in your hand, even though you've said you'll do one thing and you're delivering yeah. one thing. And then they go, I oh, know, no, we're changing the goalposts Change. now. And, and then you have that worry, like the economy is changing. There's a, there's a weird old vibe out there, isn't there? Yeah. So like maybe that's part of it as well. And maybe they're struggling with their own end of things. But, you know, 90% of it is in business. Doesn't matter whether you're selling sticks or whether you're selling clothes or whether you have a fruit stand. Everyone's trying to fuck you. What was that film? They fuck you with the cell phone. Fuck you with the cell phone. They fuck you with the cell phone. That lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, we're still here. Still here. Still here. And Christmas is coming. What? How are you going to spend? I forget. This is your podcast. You go. (laughs) Before uh, I'm going to spend it with my brother and his kids, please God. Um, I was going to ask you something there. What was I going to ask you? Is it nothing about sex? What's your plan after the the show? So you have your big show on the 23rd. Yeah. The big show finishes. Yeah. You're finishing the year with a huge big bang. Yeah. Special guests. We don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could be James Blunt. Um, You're beautiful. <laughs> well, who? Who what? What are you going to do? I need to get away for a week. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really, really struggling with my... Uh, mental health and I it's just been a really really difficult uh, end of the year and and it's kind of it's such a difficult thing to talk about because number one you can't talk about it or you go into as much detail as you want and number two everyone you meet is saying oh you're flying it you're flying it 
you're selling out this and you're selling out that and you're making loads of money and you're doing this, that and the other. But there's all, there's all this other stuff going on in the background and you feel like if you say, oh, well, I'm not really, that you're, you're not appreciative of what you have achieved. And I am appreciative and, and I, people know how appreciative I am of every single person that comes to a live show and I do not sleep for weeks in the lead up working so hard the amount of work and effort I'm putting into the show Christmas and I hope it translates and I hope people enjoy it but I'm just finding life really hard if you were talking to yourself and the other you said that to you what would you say to him I would I, you know and I do say it to myself I do, I do remind myself of everything I've achieved do you know, like you say, in, in March this year, like I thought, this is it, like it's game over. It was bad. Yeah, I thought, do you know, I could go back working for somebody, but would I be happy? And I'm just too driven and too um, creative and too passionate to go doing a nine to five. And then um, I did the live shows and they're hugely successful. But I don't know, like I'm not entirely happy and I need I need a break, first of all, to reset because, you know, I don't have kids and I don't have a mortgage, but I've been under huge pressure this year and a lot of it is self-inflicted. Some of it's not. Most of it. Most, what do you mean? Most, most of us not. Most of us not. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah. But I suppose what's self-inflicted is the shows and, and pushing on. Whereas I could have just got a job and got paid at the end of the week and took a lot of pressure off myself. But I, I kind of wanted to keep going down this path and see where it takes me, you know. Um, yeah, I just got the wind knocked out of my sails and I haven't recovered. And it's a f- it's it's just a funny thing to talk about, and I didn't expect to talk about it here today because, you know, like I say, everyone, everyone says to you, "You're flying it," yeah, and you're not. I know, and you're a cop because if you come on and you tell everyone where you are, they pick it up all wrong. They pick it up as your whinging, mm-hmm. and because what you're doing on social media, your job is to to promote stuff. You're trying to be happy. Yeah. You're trying, but you do, there's so many people know you. And you're trying to keep so many things quiet because you don't want to be whinging about stuff. But when you're in a situation, like say when I'm in my situation and I'm struggling, I have so much backup because I do have my kids. Yeah. And I do have my things. So I have my venting things. And even if I'm not going back to Vicky and I'm not saying, well, oh, guess what happened today? And we're this could be a problem. But I have them. You know, I'm not going home. You, you, you have everything in your own mind. Yeah. And you're one of these lads. You don't tell people until after. It's like there's loads of things that have happened, and you're after having a bad old run of it. And like you only tell everyone after the fact. You keep everything because I don't want to be burdening anyone, and it's no one's. It's no one's problems. Like, I don't. Yeah. No, I get that, but that's yeah. why I asked you the question originally. If that was me, I know what you're saying. Saying that. Yeah. You'd be saying, oh, fuck's sake, lad. No, I know what you mean, because when I said it to Donald Byrne, like, and I told Donald Byrne what happened, he lost the fucking head. Mm. You know, he got so thick. He's like, why the fuck didn't you tell me? Blah, blah, blah. So, and, it, you know, we we shouldn't be talking about it here because I hate stuff. I hate going on about things that we can't get into detail on. But, uh, you know, um, I just, I just need a week away. I need a week away from the world. It's just been hard, you know, like even the dog, like, you know, and, and I can take all that stuff in my stride, you know, the, the dog walking along the road, like, <laughs> oh, like that, that had 500,000 views yesterday, like yesterday. So like that flares up every now and again. So the dog is walking with no lead and I'm well able for that. Mm. And I love, I love the crack. And I love when somebody says something stupid, like, what if a drunk driver came up the road and killed the dog? You're like, well, if the drunk driver comes up the road, we're dead. Mm. Lead or no lead, we're both dead. And I love I love just having the crack with that, but um, lately I'm not enjoying it. Do you know I'm not enjoying it, and I'm just kind of like you know I'm nervous going into my DMs and stuff, and I just don't want to feel like that anymore. And there's a reason that I feel like that, and I just I just need a you know 
And it's not an influencer breakdown. It's a personal life uh, breakdown that it's real life. is spilling into social media. And um, I just want to I just want to get back to myself. Do you know, I felt like this time last year, I was, this time last year, I was riding this wave and things were going great and, and I was really enjoying life. Really, like this is, this is what I want to do. And then that's just changed then 12 months later. And thank God for the shows. Thank God for the podcast. That Mm. kept, that kept me going. The podcast. Podcast really did. Kept me here. Kept me going. Because if I didn't have that, I don't know where I'd be. I find a great release in um, sometimes when certain people piss me off, just fucking fire abuse. Yeah? <laughs> just an odd one. Yeah. Just the ones that deserve it. Like, it's really good fun. I, I enjoy getting one up on people. Mm. You know when somebody goes... Everyone does. Somebody goes, sorry, but your dog needs a lead. And I write back, apology accepted. Do you know? And yeah. you, you just feel like... you you just, You've had a bit of banter... No one's getting offended here, you know, or somebody saying to you like, uh, you know, you're breaking the law and you're like, no, I'm not. I might, be, I might break the law in your country, but I'm not breaking the law in this country. Yeah. But you take it to another level though. You, you go full Hank. Just on absolute knobbins. Price check on veggie cell. <laughs> just, just, just some, some people and it's so ridiculous. You just have to call them out. Can we tell the story about the, you sent the dick to a young girl? Oh yeah. So this is a, this is a funny one. So my page so is just, adult content. Just to put it into just perspective to, yeah. here, David sent a dick pic to a teenage girl. Right. Well, I'll, I'll just break it down. So my page is con- is adult content. Every video I pop, I click all the things on YouTube. It's not for kids. Uh, anyone that follows my stuff, when I pop the yoke on, in- on Instagram, they ask you, who's the content for? I tell everyone, it's not for kids. It's not for kids. Yeah. You don't have to watch me for that long to figure out that I am for kids. So then I get an email the other day. Well, I read it out. I read it out. Okay, but before you read out the email. Yeah. Every, every order that I give on my shop, I draw a little penis on it. I draw a little penis and I say, thank you very much. I really appreciate you because I do. And it's just a little thing. It's a little personal touch. Why are you so obsessed with penis? Pen- uh, it's, peni? It, it kind of <laughs> it kind of started as a joke back when I was eight or nine. <laughs> I've been drawing them since. Why though? Well, like you're obsessed with them. Because it's funny. What's funny about it? Just uh, fucking. You, you draw funny. them in a dirty van or you draw them on a piece of paper. You everything. I and think you, it started. You, you see them where no one sees them. You're like, look at that. It's a dick. And you're like, no, it's a shadow. And of loads of people send cucumber. them to me. Loads of people send them to me and they tag them respect to the artist. OK. I just, I just find it funny. So on every order, you say thanks for your order and you draw a little penis. Yeah. A little cartoon, Willie. And you literally draw every single every one. Every single one of them. And the more expensive the order, the fucking more elaborate the penis could be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, good to So know. you get an email then the other day? No. Don't go into any names or anything. No, no, I won't, I won't go into any names. But just to set the tone here, like when you have a shop, yeah. right, I can't tell from an order number what age someone is. <laughs> if, I can't tell from someone's credit card details what age they are. You know, like if, if, if you're making an order in my shop mm. from an adult page, I can only assume... That you're an adult. Yeah. Yeah. So I get this email the other day. Now keep in mind as well, if somebody is watching your stories, buying the content, buying something from your, they have seen you talking about drawing and referring to penises on numerous occasions. Exactly. Like I said, and I've, I've found out the legalities of it. I know that you can't sell, bring back finger and stickers to fucking children. Like the only illegal thing that I could do is if I was promoting something that's for kids and then it's not. You know, like false advertising. Oh. Yourself. You know, I don't do that. Okay. And my Shopify doesn't... If I was to put... um, Say I was to do a description on my shop and I was to put the word fucking it or something like that, it'll tell you and it won't push it. It won't send it. It won't put it out anywhere. Okay. It, it won't let you. Right. So I get this uh, email. What do you think you're playing at drawing this to my daughter? That's disgusting. This is the bit that triggered me a little. And he, sent you, he sent you a photo of yeah. the... Yeah. I will be taking this further. You should be ashamed of yourself. She's only 16 years of age. How the fuck am I supposed to know what age she is? Right? And taking it further. Huh, what, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? I'm doing nothing wrong. Right? So, and he sent me a picture of the... And it, it's one of the least dicky looking dicks that I've ever rolled. All right, can I see it? Yeah. It's one of the least dicky looking dicks. It's a harmless little dick. Right, <laughs> okay. There's basically two little circles in it. Yeah, I, I'm going... I'm... Hang on now a second. 
It looks like a thumb, really, more it's than It's really a, what it looks like. Yeah. 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 It's not. I'd say you didn't even draw that. That was Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> that was Vicky. So, so Vicky, poor Vicky is in there Vicky drawing. Vicky will be drawing Willie's whatever. You're right? under pressure. Hey, coming up to Christmas, you have to do what you have to do. So I won't give you someone's name, but his name is right? Okay. And I say, hi, man. Take it where you like. Although I advise you, you shove it up your grumpy old ass. Three laughing faces. Different paragraph. Maybe your time would be better spent watching what content your daughter is watching on the internet than barking at me because I don't give a shite if you're butthurt or not. <laughs> Second paragraph. My page is clearly 100% adult content and every person that follows me is aware of that fact. And as, imp- as impressive as technology is nowadays, my shop and I have not yet figured out how to magically tell what age someone is by their name and their order number. Anyways, have a great Christmas and go have a big shite for yourself. Right. I have never heard from him. Yeah. Oh, when did you send that? That was last Wednesday. Oh, I'll give him time. Yeah. And then today, remember I was telling you this one uh, in the UK, sending me email after email and message after message about her stuff is missing. It's sent. It's sent ages. Mm. I know it's sent. The tracking number said it was... Got, I'm, I'm tracking this. And she sent me so many ignorant messages. And then today... Magically She just messed me Oh my neighbour had it Sorry It had <laughs> The wrong name And the wrong address on it But it had the name and address That she gave you Yeah Oh but it was your It's your problem But it was my problem I know I know I wish you look at that's business You're going to have that Yeah So I was just uh, like Ran happy Christmas to you God <laughs> ah, Stop No you didn't Yeah I did So it's just little things like that to, Like who do Who do these people think they are And sometimes you have to Sometimes I think it's important And it's great little buzz To go Ah uh, hold on now Stop now you're, could, you, you're could you put like An over 18's filter On your website Where you have to click like Yes I am over 18 that, You couldn't do that With every product No 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 But just the minute You land on the website I don't give a shite Whether you do or you don't I'm just trying to Come up with a reason uh, Come up with a, um, a An well, excuse in, in three years, I've got two of them. Okay. And so one, in three years, you've sent two dick pics to teenage girls? No. One... <laughs> I could have sent them to more. I don't know. They're not dick pics. Uh, but one lad sent me... I'm just uh, thinking about the me, sound bite. Uh, one lad sent me a voicemail about sending uh, Willie to his wife. Right? Ah, uh, stop. Yeah. He's a grown man. And another lad, a big long email about his accountant. Having an invoice for And a willy on it Yeah I saw one of them Yeah An accountant sent me a photo Saying I'm in doing the accounts For somebody And this is your friend <laughs> <laughs> There was a big willy On the invoice <laughs> Yeah No, if you stay on the oak You don't want a willy on it For that invoice That's, that's fine I, Okay You can do that You but can you add that put, little box in Yeah you can Stick that at the bottom of the I'm sure you'd only welcome The opportunity not to draw a, a Mickey Less work for me Less Mickeys please But most people Like the little personal touch And the, that personal touch Happens to be a willy What did you call your Willie growing up I used to call it my Mickey I'd be the same A Mickey mm. And what did you call her girls then uh, She didn't have a Mickey hopefully No 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 What did you call her Lady Garden I'd say it was Fanny A Fanny Yeah and We used to call it a Minnie A Minnie Yeah I don't know That's what my chaps call them now A Minnie and a Mickey oh, Minnie and a Mickey Yeah No it was probably Fanny Fanny Yeah Really? Yeah, because I remember being so shocked one day listening to an American program and their fanny is their arse. Or a fanny pack. Watch my fanny. A fanny my pack. fanny's coming true. The bum bag. <laughs> yeah. David, thanks a million for the chat. There's no bother. Thanks and, for all the work uh, today. Huh? Thanks for all the work today. Thanks for being my 14th best friend. That's grand. I've gone down to 14th. I don't know what I've done. No, no, second or third. You're second Not or third. Not so bad. Not so bad. You're inside the top five anyway. Can't go wrong with that. Do I get a dehumidifier for you my do. car? I have a big bag of stuff for you now. A big bag of stuff? I don't want a big bag of stuff now. I have a dehumidifier now and a woolly hat. I have a diary for you as well. And I'll be on my way. I have a diary for you. Brilliant. Yeah. Are we going to do a live show next year, me and you? Love to. Just me and you? Just me and you. Are you capable of keeping me from not getting you in trouble? Yeah. What do you mean? You know now. Irish, there's great freedom in the live shows. Ah, well then. then Just don't go on about... What? (laughs) (laughs) Come on. Nothing, I'm not going to say anything. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks a million.